Monaco Pizza presents SCP. The Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle and Adam Wilde. Ah! Yeah! Yeah! Yes! Yeah, but I mean, Islanders fans, you know, I really feel for it's you. Tough. And, you it's tough. Really, it's, uh, it's unfortunate, you know, when it happens, you know, to definitely not us. <laughs> Just like Sam Coast, just like Jeff Carter, it's just like everybody else. I'm not gonna get him, Leaf fans. We got him. Finally, the Leafs, fish. the Leafs lock Real up man. a guy who's a generational talent, a point per game player, <laughs> Justin Hall. Everybody, Justin yes. Hall. Just two year deal, six hundred fifty thousand dollars per. That's great. Mission accomplished. Also, Tavares, as in John Tavares. Do you want to say it? Is. John Tavares, or John Tavares, or John Tavares, I've been told by certain Portuguese people. I don't know if that's correct. It might not be. All I know is, Johnny T is a Toronto Maple Leaf! Woo! It's sick! It actually happened. It's so sick. It actually happened. Okay, let's do so, Steve, you it's had the weird. live stream going for, for this. Yes. When you started the live stream, because you were like, it was well, like it was like an hour and 20 in when we actually found out, right? Uh, it was about 54 minutes. 54 minutes. It was minutes. a lot of time. That's, a, that's you, a long time to go with nothing. And you don't know whether or not anything is going to happen either, because no. there's been many free agent friends these days. Uh, other than John Tavares, yesterday was sort of slow. And, um, and because of all the because of the negotiation period, half of the stuff that I had to talk about was already well known news. Like right. we knew JVR was going to Philly. I got to talk about Ryan McDonough re-signing. Uh, everyone likes to talk about a re-signing. You know, it's not exciting when a player stays. With their team, unless there's drama involved like Stamkos. You know, Doughty was basically an afterthought. McDonough, whatever. We're waiting for the big fish. Waiting for the big fish. And then Elliot, like there was no buildup. No, he just, just tweeted it. Right there, bang. And, and it was, did he go to broadcast, because I was in and out. I had family in town. Did he go to air with it, or did he tweet it first? It was like in the middle of a conversation. He just goes, it sounds like Tavares, seven years, Toronto. And he, and he staggered it like that, so I got to go, <gasps> what? Ah! Like, just freak out. I'm grabbing Charlie, and I'm like, no, that's, I can't settle for a sounds like. I, I, need to, I need to hear it from the horse's mouth. And then it got reported by, I want to say, Sports Illustrated, and Elliot ended up tweeting it, which is even more official than hearing it on TV for some reason. But when Tavares finally tweeted it, that was it. That's what felt real for you? That was the most... And it's still... No, it's still totally weird. Even though we've seen photos of him. Have you been to the Leafs Cap Friendly page? It's weird. It's a very weird it's situation. It's weird. I'm going to pull it up right now. Um, uh, I have to say, I believe the first site that had it was Maple Leaf Hot Stove. Anthony Petrelli, I think, was the very first reporter, yeah. Yeah, so shout out to them. And Anthony Petrelli had another one. Didn't he have another... I want to say Ron Hainsey last year. Uh, oh, this year. Yeah, didn't he have someone else? I thought. I mean, who cares? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> no really. offense, Anthony. But, <laughs> but yeah, but so you got you got the big one. Everyone was giving David Pinota props, and uh, they should. He had a really good couple days. That's there. at the fourth period. Yep. But uh, no, I believe Anthony Petrelli was the very first guy on this. Jesse, what were you doing? What was I doing what? What were you doing on July first? I was at home. I think I was cleaning. And then I were you watching TV? You were, did you have like, it on? Did you even have it on? I was watching Brooklyn Nine Nine. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> it's my new. I've heard that's a great show. It's I my mean, new favorite show. I've never it seen it. I, was I might binge it. watch it on the plane. Um, Peralta said something hilarious, mm-hmm. and I think I got an update from the. Uh, I'll say the Sportsnet app. Mm. It wasn't the Sportsnet, it was the other one, but it was the Sportsnet app, and it just said John Tavares is uh, Toronto Maple Leaf. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, but I was by myself. So I'm not <laughs> Very excited. I didn't have anybody to scream with. Caprice was having a nap. Could have called me. <laughs> Caprice was having a nap. And then she wasn't. And then she wasn't. because <laughs> I, I, I blasted in the door, and we've got, uh, we got dogs, right? So both dogs, whenever you have a lot of energy at something all out of the blue, they're up. Yeah. And they blasted in with me, and I was like, Caprice! Fucking got him! <laughs> fucking got him! <laughs> Fuck! And then I left, and uh, she was like, oh, "Okay, great." Okay. Went back to sleep. That's so great. that was great. Yeah, and you know, I, I just I feel like there is a uh, there's a ton of different angles that we have to follow. We have to go through here. Yes, how Pittsburgh center depth is better. <laughs> how the Leafs can't contend with their D. How a shut up! You lost! <laughs> Don't care. 
you were working for Sportsnet, right? When you're doing that live stream, um, not or were officially. You, or were you working for Steve Dangle? I was. No, it was, it was it, on it was, my channel. It was on your channel. Okay, yeah, I was on the Sportsnet channel. But like, you know, part of what comes with that is like I'll only pretty much retweet like Sportsnet people, and mm. you know, I was helping out with. Uh, Posting on the website and stuff. The John Tavares video went up. I think it was my fastest one to ever hit 100,000 views. Maybe Nashville. Mm-hmm. But it's, yeah, like about 200,000 views on my channel for the past like 48 hours. Maybe more. Which is stupid. The, the, stupid. The outright jubilation. Oh, I should also say, oh, while I was watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine, I was working for Tim and Sid because it's July 1st. Of course. Basketball oh, right. free agency and NHL free agency. Yeah. So I wasn't just... Lazy, being lazy. Did you I was see? Also working. Did you guys see the Darren Drager <laughs> tweet going? What will be a bigger story? LeBron to the Raptors? <laughs> Which see, no, that wasn't, that wasn't or, him asking or, it, or John. <laughs> I felt I felt a little bad for him because he sent out the tweet that there was a debate in the newsroom. Well, any newsroom's got God knows how many people in it, and it was probably one like twenty three year old just got his job there named Steve Dangle. In 2013. John Tavares will definitely yeah. be bigger. John Tavares is a bigger story. And just going, you know, I'm going to make a name for myself. Me against the world arguing <laughs> with 20 guys. who are all looking at me like, "Are you? is this kid? Like, yeah. boss, you should lay this guy off tomorrow. He doesn't know anything about sports. <laughs> well, I, I, my cousins uh, were in town and they're from Washington State. And, and uh, they didn't know who John Tavares was. I mean, they go see Tri-City <laughs> Americans games once or twice a year. But they're not, they're not huge fans. And uh, they know who Damon Lankow is, though. Strange. He used wow. to play there. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, um, I, I got them all jacked up for it. So when it happened, they started texting me. But they were really waiting for LeBron. And, right. and then when LeBron signed, I was actually in the room and I showed them. They're like, the Lakers won! And they were flipped out and it was great. And that lasted 12 hours, maybe. <laughs> See, is it, was it one guy or are there just not a lot of smart people over there? No. Wow. <laughs> The You're tweet, just making up for saying think, you had the rap. I, the tweet I mean, says, big debate in the TSN newsroom last night. Might be Play facetious. along. Bigger story, LeBron signs with the Raptors or Tavera signs with the Leafs. Well, if, the, if LeBron signs with the Raptors, it's a surprise. And I get that. That's a surprise because there's like the Lakers you expected, right? That's out of nowhere. Did we, did we not expect him to go to the Lakers? Yeah, yeah. yeah. For, like, so that's like, okay, now. that's par for the course. Plus, he didn't have any big like ESPN hour long special yeah. or a write up in Sports Illustrated this time. And I think they meant in Canada. It's not, that's not even a question still. That'd be a big, <laughs> no, that'd be a huge story in the States too. What? No, it's, it would be the biggest story oh, no, no, no. of all time. I'm not yeah. talking about LeBron to Toronto. I'm talking about if you I am. If LeBron to Lakers, John Johnny T to, to oh, Toronto. Okay. I think in a bigger story in Canada is yeah, Johnny but that's T. That's not what we're debating. No, no and they didn't no. say that. We're, you don't think so? Mm, Maybe not. Well, that's actually tough. Okay, LeBron signing with the Lakers or Toronto? You're saying Le- LeBron signing with See, the Lakers? We're calling him stupid, but now we're doing it. We're doing the thing. No, LeBron signing with the Raptors is the conversation. Not the LeBron, LeBron signing with the Raptors. Actually happen. LeBron, what LeBron actually doing happened anything. is John Tavares was the bigger story. Yeah. But it, if people, he signs with the Raptors, the Raptors are the bigger story than yeah. anything it, ever. LeBron needs a chocolate bar. It's a bigger story yeah. than the NHL. Anyone, like, anyone listening to the radio is rear-ending the car in front of them going, what? Like, yeah. they're, they're just not being able you to imagine? cope with that news. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, the best news it'd be ever. like when they played the brown note on. South I just Park. don't just understand how you carnage. Do that. <laughs> just <laughs> everyone shits their pants. A mass oh pants shitting on the four hundred one. I just uh, don't understand how you tweet that and say big debate. <laughs> he's making fun of the one or two. No, he's not. Yeah, he said he play is. along. <laughs> he was serious. Well, we're doing it. It we're was a big along. debate. Yeah, I, we we played along. I want to meet these people, <laughs> or I don't want to meet these people. Anymore. See, no, it's tough working in a in a sports newsroom because if you don't have well rounded knowledge on all the sports, you're like sort of shunned. So, like, I was always like yeah, careful you, not you don't to get say stuff there. like that. I I managed to get by. Yeah, but you worked in like <laughs> yeah, you were NHL one, you were an intern. Though. Yeah, so you can get by, and then two, you never worked as like as in the newsroom as a full time job. You worked in no. like a hockey department or like how you do now, you specialize in hockey. NHL Network was just hockey, obviously, but yeah. CBC, I was doing, man, I did a round robin volleyball game between Canada and Japan. I had to look up the rules. That was rough. Uh, and uh, yeah, I guess it was mostly just CBC. But you know what? <laughs> Doesn't matter. Anyways, Doesn't matter. I was in the TSN newsroom. That's why. So like, I feel like I know the atmosphere. You went atmosphere. in there. No, like we literally worked side by side. It was the same newsroom. Adam, 
<laughs> Move on. <laughs> All right, am I moving us on? Join well, the Bears! There's a lot of stuff that we can get to, but I think what we should do is make a call to Andy Graziano, who is a, uh, who's a reporter for uh, WFAN 660, host of the Secondary Pod. We're going to bring him on in a second here. And the reason we want to bring him on is the Islanders' perspective. We can give you Leafs' perspective, and we will. we got lots of time to do that. The Islanders is need, officially the Leafs' farm team. Let's talk to the reporter, the guy that's following the Islanders, and get that follow so bringing on Andy Graziano from uh, WFAN 660 in New York. He's the host of the Secondary Pod. Andy, tough, tough, tough couple of days on the island. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about how, w- what the feeling is uh, from your perspective? Hey, guys. Good evening. Thanks for having me on. Really excited to talk about the Matt Martin stuff. I'm assuming that's what you're talking about. Right? <laughs> Great day for the Islanders. Yeah, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> um, yeah, the mood has been uh, tense. If I could say that in a better word, you know, it's one of those times where you kind of just wish social media wasn't, didn't even exist, right? Um, Islander fans have been taking it pretty hard, as yeah. expected. Uh, I don't think there's any way around um, what happened when your franchise player like that just up and leaves. Um, and I wrote today on WFAN my feelings on it in, in terms of Tavares himself, because I think he was facing a lot of vitriol from the fans on kind of how he left and they kind of thought that he was deceptive about it and uh, some people were calling him an outright liar and a traitor and you know I kind of went against that point because I just feel that it was such a personal decision for John uh, and his fiance obviously um it, it's the only time this was ever going to come up for him right I mean at the end of this deal he's going to be 35 you're not looking at a long-term deal as we all know at that age mm-hmm. this was his one opportunity to take and I think that a lot of people in the same situation, given the same exact circumstances that were happening uh, around the Islanders and have happened around the Islanders, I think would have probably made the same, same decision. I think that's what they'll ultimately come to in time, but I think they just need to process what has happened. And I don't know how long that's going to take. I'm hoping it's sooner rather than later. It's a breakup, right? Absolutely. Yeah. It's like, you know, you love someone your whole life and then they turn around to you and say, well, I love you too, but, and then they up and leave. Uh, right. And you know what? At the end of the day, it hurts them just as much as it hurts you, right? But on the surface, you're being selfish and you're thinking all of yourself at that moment, you know, not realizing what went into that decision on the other side. And I think we saw that in John's press conferences Sunday. And then he had a media call with all of us in New York following his introductory conference with Brendan Shanahan and Kyle Dubas. And he sounded sincerely really broken up over it, mm-hmm. to be honest. Were you surprised when the news broke? Uh, well, Steve, I know you and I had a little <laughs> banter going on uh, right before it broke, and it was to the point where I didn't know if Steve's keyboard was broken, maybe, because it, he he wasn't texting me back legibly, to be honest. <laughs> it was just, uh, I, I don't think he could even process what was going on. And I, I think I was, at first, very confident that he would re-up. Honestly, um, I think we all were started getting. Yeah, as it started getting closer, though, you kind of started getting that feeling because I don't think he ever really thought that Toronto was an option. Right. I mean, it was a fantasy for all this time. Mm-hmm. Wow. What if I went home and played for my hometown Leafs? Wouldn't that be something? He's probably sitting back saying to his fiance. And then all of a sudden it becomes a reality. And he gets contacted by Brendan and Kyle, and they're like, you know what, John, we can really make this happen. And I think that's kind of when it all turned. And as the days wore on, I kind of went from 75-25, where I kind of hovered at the, at, towards the end of the season. I kind of went to 70-30, and then 65-35, and then 60-40. And probably when he signed, I was probably at 40-60. But I still thought the Sharks were on top of that race. I thought, you know, they came in with a tremendous offer. I, I heard it was in like the 13 million AAV range, which would have made him the highest paid player in the game. Wow. I really thought that was going to do it. But at the end of the day, for all the people that want to call him a liar and a traitor, he stuck to his word, right? It wasn't about money at the end of the day because he actually took less from Toronto than he would have made if he would have stayed home. D- does that take the sting out of it at all, you think? No. <laughs> There's really no, no way to make no. that good. No, and you know, in my column today, I also wrote from a personal perspective. You know, I was an Islander fan a long time, and there's, there's kind of been nobody, in my opinion, and I'm not, I'm not kind of trying to grease the wheels here, but there's, 
I, I think Steve has kind of found that perfect balance, right, between being a fan and and being a working media member. Mm-hmm. That's generous. Um, <laughs> no, it, it's 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 true. You know, nobody can 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 do what you do, Steve, and then come on and make one of your videos and like just go absolutely nuts like you're still a cra- you still have that crazed fan like you were a kid and i think that's tremendous because for me it's been totally the opposite right the writing has totally taken the fandom out of it for me and it's wow. kind of forced me to be totally objective and um but i i had my moment with it after the press conference and the media call where i sat down for 15 minutes and you know my son who happens to be a rangers fan is kind of lightheartedly jabbing at me and my mm-hmm. wife, who's also a Ranger fan, comes in behind him and goes, you know what, this kind of really sucks. Let Dad have his time with it. <laughs> you know, so, what a great woman. Um, That's amazing. It's good that you married her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's terrific. I think I'll keep her. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I think that that's kind of when I had my 15 minutes with it, I think. Mm-hmm. And then right after that, I kind of had to put my writer's hat on again and kind of get into that objective mode. So, again, I don't, I don't think that it's going to go away anytime soon for fans and and you just to throw fuel on the fire, you have the Eric Carlson stuff, and then they start getting all excited about the potential of the Islanders landing Eric Carlson, which is like, I don't know, what, 10% chance, right? So, and, yeah, and we, we got to talk about that because, you know, and I hate to interrupt you, but but that no, was the report this afternoon, Andy, is that, that the Islanders were were in and they were trying to make a big splash and lose a guy that can do that. Like, we know we've seen him do that mm-hmm. before. Um, my question is, do they have the assets? Uh, and if they do have the assets and they've got the cap room for sure, are they pulling a Bob? Like, are they bringing Bobby Ryan on? And what are their chances? You said 10%. I think so. I mean, from all I'm hearing right now, and uh, there's been a lot of scuttlebutt today. And then Steve knows this too. Is, and you, all you, all you gentlemen know this trades are so hard to pin down. Fans ask us all the time. What's going on? What are you hearing? What's going on? And, unless I'm really sure about something like I was early this morning with the Matt Martin stuff that the Islanders and Rangers were both involved and that Kyle Dubas magically created a market for Matt Martin on this. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if I'm not really sure about that, like with the Carlson stuff, I've kind of tried to stay away from that because things change so quickly. You know what something is in, is an hour ago. Isn't what it is now. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. how fast it can change and how fast things can fall apart. And, I know the Islanders are there. You know, I know that they've made some competitive offers. I know, I I was told anyway that they have spoken to Carlson's agent, but so have other teams. And let's face it, if you're sitting back and you're Eric Carlson, you're controlling technically where you want to go. Pierre Dorian's got zero leverage in the situation. Right. He knows he has to move him or he gets nothing for him, like what he just saw happen to the Islanders and John Tavares. So he's in a no-win situation, I think. And But what he's doing now, I tend to feel, is kind of playing the teams against each other. We just heard an hour ago that Dallas somehow is in this mix all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. Nobody's been talking about them in this at all. All of a sudden, someone leaks that they might be the front runner. So I think that it's a little bit of games going on with Dorian and kind of playing the teams against each other. But asset-wise, unless you're going to dip into like a Kiefer Bellows or if you're going to dip into the 18 class of the Wallstrom, Dobson, Bodie Wild, throw a couple of picks on top of that, take Bobby Ryan's salary. You know, the Islanders only right now have about $19.8 million in cap, I believe, after their recent signing of Robin Lerner to a one-year deal. So they're getting kind of tight there. If you're talking about Carlson's going to make 11, 11 and a half, he's going to make Drew Dowdy money, and then you throw on top of that the seven and a quarter that Ryan's making, you're cutting it pretty tight unless you have a sizable asset going back the other way. Right. Maybe a Brock Nelson. Uh, who's eligible for arbitration, but it, it's it's getting tight. So that's why I don't think the Islanders have a great shot at Landon Carlson. Let's face it, the free agent market is kind of terrible. Yes, it's been brutal. He might be better. Yeah, he might be better off sitting back and, and you know saving that twenty million until the free agent market kind of picks up again, maybe next year. If, especially if Dallas can't get Tyler Sagan under contract. It also just strikes me as not the greatest idea. And mm-hmm. I mean, if your ch- if your team has a chance to bring in Eric Carlson, you should probably. Go for it. But the Islanders, and, and what I said in my video yesterday, you know, fans are acting like the sky is falling. And, and I mean, absolutely. Mm-hmm. You, you know, you lose your captain, you lose your best player. Uh, you know, Lou maybe made some, not maybe, he made some questionable signings that, that I found mm-hmm. very surprising. Which we'll get to. For but the Islanders already had a decent little core of young players. They have the rookie of the year, and they probably nailed the draft better than any other team there. 
are you really going to dump all those players like as soon as you got them? Like, like this just, this seems like the, it's almost like they're rebuilding, but they're already a couple of years in. Mm-hmm. So they almost get right, to yeah. cheat and like uh, quickly facilitate the rebuild. Yeah, I called it a, re- I called it a recalibration right, yeah. of what the Islanders are kind of going to have to go through now. And sure, don't get me wrong. You're right, Steve. If they're going to, if Ottawa, if Dorian is somehow talked into taking, like I would move one of those guys, right? I might consider moving a Bellows and two firsts if I'm going to take on Ryan's salary and have to pay Carlson $11.5 million. I would seriously, from an Islander's perspective, consider that because you're just basically replacing one superstar with another. I mean, Eric Carlson's a generational talent. He's a forward playing defense, essentially. Um, so I think that that's something I would entertain. I'm not saying I'd necessarily jump at it, but it's something I would definitely have to look really, really hard at. And then the flip side of that is what you just said. You know, they kind of they still have question marks in goal, right? Your goaltenders this year are Robin Lerner and Thomas Grice. Huge question marks there. You still have a defense that gave up almost 300 goals last year that honestly hasn't been changed at all. They re-signed Thomas Hickey. They're still trying to get Calvin DeHaan under contract, who I hear you guys are going to try to steal as well, by the that's, way. That's Adam. So, yeah, I, I keep wanting – I keep – I'm I'm on squarely on the Calvin DeHaan to Toronto train. Do you <laughs> what are you what are you hearing about Calvin DeHaan? Uh, you know he's still he's still I, I really believe that his his heart is here. He wants to, he wants to be here. Um, I know that his girlfriend loves it here, and especially she's really really close friends with Sydney Esiason, who's coming back now. And I know that that stuff often gets overlooked in this whole thing, but you know as you guys know, wives, significant others. They might not be, I said this about Tavares a week ago, they might not be the deciding factor, but to say that they are no factor is just naive. Mm -hmm. They are. Absolutely. Um, So I think that she really wants to stay. I think Calvin really does want to stay. But, you know, after being kind of tossed around in in arbitration last year by Garth Snow, that kind of left some lingering bad feelings. So he's trying to kind of start over with Lou. And Lou is not exactly a the most friendly, approachable guy, let's say. <laughs> right? he, <laughs> Lou, Unless you're Lou, a fourth liner. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Um, so I, I, I think that they, they are discussing things still, but from what I'm hearing, Calvin does have other offers on the table um, that at the end of the day just might net him more money. In, in terms, it might just be a money thing over a loyalty thing for Calvin. Um, I think that Toronto is there. I think that if Toronto somehow gets to a multi-year commitment to him, whether it be two years, three years, um, I think they might be able to nab him, in all honesty. Um, I, I want to rewind here a little bit, if that's okay. And I, and I, I sincerely sure. hope they get to a couple of years with Calvin Hunt, because he seems like a guy that's worth it. But, you know, he's he's sort of the, and no, with no offense to him, I, I, I do want to get back to the kind of the guy that, that we should be talking about, and that's John Tavares. And the, the thing for me, that that this started last summer, right? When he informed the Islanders, he was he wasn't going to talk extension, at least mm-hmm. at that point. For you, when you look at the way Garth Snow handled this season, so he goes into um, he goes into the season knowing that his superstar is is not talking extension until after the season's over, and then they are they are in the playoff race in February, and the only deal they make at the deadline is, I think, a fourth-round pick or a third-round pick for Brandon Davidson, and they fall out of it. Um, yep. How much of this do you lay at the feet of Gar Snow and his management group? Almost all of it, to be honest with you. Um, I don't think there's any way around that. I think the way Snow bundled the goaltending situation, which ultimately led to Jarl Halak taking a ridiculously low deal to back up to Garask in Boston. I think the way he didn't replace uh, Calvin DeHaan when he got injured and then Johnny Boychuk missed a chunk of time. I think there was no moves made then. I think that, you know, Gart Snow just, it's a results-based business and the results just were not there. And I don't think that John saw enough of an effort there. And then you throw everything else on top of that. You throw in, okay, well now a new ownership group comes in, but now how long do I have to wait for them to undo what Snow did? There's a couple of bad contracts on the book. It's Cal Clutterbuck, Casey Sezikis is a little high. Um, you go out and you just, you know, you kind of br- brutally somehow give Leo Komarov, and no offense to Leo Komarov, you 
trying to give him a four year deal and you're kind of sitting back saying, are we just repeating the same mistakes that, that Garth just made? And you have the arena thing, right? And, and yeah. let's not, let's talk about that. Pat Brisson, apparently, um, not apparently, Pat Brisson emailed uh, Stephen Marcus of Tuesday uh, yesterday and said, uh, he was asked directly, did the arena situation have any factor in Tavares' decision? And Pat Brisson goes, not really. So not exa- not a yes, but not exactly a no. Mm-hmm. And I think that it's an annoyance. You, know, you kind of see right, and you see Carter Hutton signs for Buffalo for less money than the Islanders were offering. You see David Perron go back to St. Louis. Meanwhile, he had a, an exact same offer on the deck from the Islanders. You see John Moore, another Islanders target, he signs with Boston. You see, there's no doubt to me, in my opinion, that the arena factor played played a role in this as well. I mean, if you're a player and your choice is playing. 20 games in Brooklyn, which pretty much threw the Islanders out the window, right? You had Brett Yormark calling them a rent a team for crying out loud. Mm-hmm. And then half your games at NYCB Live, which is like between an AHL arena and an NHL arena, they don't kind of know what they are, versus playing at Air Canada Center. <laughs> what are yeah. you going to choose? <laughs> Scotiabank Arena. It's sir. just, oh, it's Scotiabank <laughs> Arena now. I apologize. You know what? Shame As three days on ago. me. Shame <laughs> on me. I wasn't going to correct you because I, I didn't even catch it. I didn't even catch it. I'm no, going to be doing that all just, year. Yeah, th- at the you should literally, You should literally just hang up the phone now. Yeah, I know. This is over. <laughs> Credibility shot. Now. No, Andy, I am sorry. That is horrible. <laughs> I'm bugging you, man. But, uh, well, I mean, it's just, and, and let's talk about that because Val Philpola gets one year, 2.75, whatever. Yep. You can you can flip him at the deadline. Line, somebody looking for a depth center. Yeah, people but, called that such a crap deal, but uh, dude, it's the NHL, and he's a overpaid. center, <laughs> and he's not making that much. Someone's going to get him. Right, but Leo right. Komarov, yep. I, I love, we love Leo. He was a hero here, but he's a great guy. Four years at 12, 12 million? Yep. He got Jay Beagle yep. money. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. What's and up with you that? know what? Leo's Leo's going to be one of those guys. He's one of those guys, right? That you that you hate to play against. He's a mm-hmm. pest. He's always in your face. He's that gritty guy. I think they were looking for somebody to really replace, you know, Nikolai Kuhlman and kind of be that guy they can throw out there on the penalty kill and then add a little grit. There's no secret that the Islanders were a very soft team to play against last year. And I think we, that's kind of what Lemerlo's trying to kind of remake that mold, but. Again, by committing four years to a guy like Leo Komarov, when now what do the Islanders have? They have a first line, they have two third lines, two fourth lines. <laughs> Essentially, is what they have, right? Mm-hmm. They have a ton of bottom six forwards that, uh, sure, you come into camp and you create a terrific competition for those spots, but you're really not helping your your your, your top two lines at all in that situation. And that's what I said before. It's kind of like, are you kind of repeating? And, and this, this I heard from Lou before he came in that some people were afraid. Uh, I talked to a couple of league execs and a couple of team execs around the league, and they kind of all said the same thing to me. They were like, you know, we kind of get the feeling that Lou might be stuck in the old NHL. You know, like he's wasn't really keeping up mm-hmm. with, with how the game has changed. And, uh, God, I hope for Islander fans that we're not seeing that in some of the deals that he made yesterday. Well, Lou made the Matt Martin deal in Toronto, and he's now made the Matt yep. Martin deal in the island. And and we <laughs> felt like we, the the additions that he made in Toronto, honestly, uh, a lot of them were debatable. The one thing he did do great was he sorted out the contract situations. He got he found yep. a, a, a taker for Dion Phaneuf, uh, which was a huge, huge, huge uh, win for us. Um, no salary retention. No was salary. Crazy. Retention. Crazy. But in the signings and the trades that he made, there's some questions like, you know, Brian Boyle, Thomas Proclan, it's that's two second round picks in a row. Was that necessary? You know, like, or, you know, could they have gone out and found the depth guy or did they already have it with Dominic Moore? I'm just going to read something to you. This is from Mike Fail on Twitter. Uh, Islanders have a combined cap hit of two, tw- tw- sorry, 20 million. 450,000 wrapped up in Leo Komarov, Andrew Ladd, Cal Clutterbuck, Casey Sezikis, Phil Pula, and Matt Martin. And I have to ask, why Matt Martin after you've got Clutterbuck, Ladd, Sezikis, and now Komarov? What, what, I, I understand Matt Martin will play every game, but I'm not sure what he adds that you didn't already have, or is it just more that you need more toughness? My question was going to be, why is Matt Martin a New York Islander today? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Matt Martin, I'll say this for Matt Martin, all right, and we can debate his his skill on the ice and his value on the ice all we want. Mm-hmm. We can pull out Corsi and we can read off all the advanced stats we want, but at the end of the day, Matt Martin is an extremely valuable presence off the ice and in that locker room. I'll say that. 
Um, the fact that there was even a market for him, and I was told it was upwards of five to seven teams, wow. including the Islanders and the Rangers, um, tells you that you know Matt Martin's value kind of goes beyond what he contributes on the ice. Now, I get that I'm kind of contradicting what I said before. It's a results-based business, right? And if Matt Martin doesn't help you get results, then what's the sense? But the Islanders also have a little bit of a, a PR issue on their hands at this point. Um, with the Tavares leaving and, and the whole arena situation, not breaking ground on Belmont yet and this and that. So I think Matt Martin helps stabilize that a bit. He, he'll, he's able to come in and stabilize a, what I'm assuming to be very upset locker room. You know, Arthur Staple put something out in the athletic the other day that he was texting a couple of players about the Tavares situation. And he texted one player and said, you know, did you see some fans burning jerseys? And the player texts Arthur back and says, I don't blame them. Wow. So there's obviously some hard feelings in the locker room, too. So I think Matt Martin comes in and kind of stabilizes that also. Um, I can tell you from personal experience, he's always been one of my favorite people to talk to. He was always available, whether they won 7 nothing or lost their 15 straight game 7 nothing. He was always there, always uh, willing to speak, uh, never kind of condescending or, or angry about it. Um, and believe me, there's been players that have <laughs> reacted that way, too, at certain times in the Islanders' the last seven years or so. But um, So I, I think Martin's value goes beyond uh, what he could offer on the ice at this point. Yeah, one one thing Lou did do uh, in his time with the Leafs, and I'm still a big believer in the numbers, and it seems like there's a new one every day, and I'm fascinated by all of it, and a new chart, and a new way of evaluating players. But one thing the, the past maybe two, three years with the Leafs has shown me is, you know, there are intangibles. There's definitely intangibles. Absolutely. There are uh, big things off the ice and in the locker room. Like one one thing I've been saying lately, I think Dubas has always been a brilliant hockey mind and he's showing that. Mm -hmm. But uh, Lou Lamorello's job was not necessarily to be the GM and make all these, you know, crazy hockey moves. It was to show everyone, Kyle in particular, how to be a boss. Yes. Yep. How to be the boss of a hockey team, and you bring in a guy like Matt Martin. I mean, I don't, I don't think you're bringing him in to win the Stanley Cup. You know, you never know. But you're bringing him in to, you know, if if a couple guys on the team need to be put in a headlock, yeah, <laughs> he'll do it. Well, and and, and lose a big culture guy, right? I mean, he changed yep. the yep. he changed the way. Everything in Toronto, and I like I, I understand people going at him for some of the moves he made here because some of them I disagree with too. The Nikita Zaitsev contract, the Matt Martin contract. There's a few other things, but let's not pretend that the Toronto Maple Leafs are not forever changed by Lou Lamorello in yep. a, in a good way. In the way they deal with the media, in the way they deal with the players, I think Lou Lamorello had a huge, huge part in the transition of how how it is to play in Toronto for players and set the stage for John Tavares coming here. Nothing says I mean business like trading five guys on picture day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was his first trade. With the Islanders. <laughs> it was with the Islanders. You're Michael right. Gardner. I forgot about that. Forgot um, about that. I do. Think about, think, about, think, think about this too, right? You, you, you're you're kind of sitting back, and we've all been in this business a long time, guys, right? And with, with something as big as the John Tavares situation, when he and Paperson were – uh, hosting the interviews in Los Angeles. And then after that process was done and it got to Thursday, there is no way possible without Lou Lamarillo that there was no leaks anywhere of anything. No. I mean, let's face it. We were all spinning, right? Mm-hmm. We were all spinning, trying to call everybody and their grandmother that we could to get anything on what was going on. And, and then when we started getting stuff, it was kind of just, everyone was contradicting each other. It was, oh, well, Tavares made the decision, you know, late Friday night. And then Pagnotta follows that up with, oh, well, he's starting to call teams Saturday morning, let them know his decision. And then John comes Sunday in the press conference and blows us all up and says, oh, no, I didn't decide until late Saturday night. So there was just, there's no way that, that in that big of a situation that no leaks come out unless Lou Lamorello was behind it. <laughs> he's just, it's unbelievable how little's coming out of the organization at this point. Like, really, it's crazy. Well, and here's how conditioned I am. Uh, you know, having Lou Lamorello as uh, my team's GM for uh, what was it? The past three years. Three years. Like? Yeah. When I saw that quote of uh, you know fans are burning his jerseys. Oh, I don't blame them. My first thought was he's going to find out who that player was who said that. <laughs> 
<laughs> and he's going to kick them in the ass. Yeah. Yep, you, no doubt about it. Hope you, you like Bridgeport. <laughs> yeah, oh, I mean, <laughs> you don't randomly text media members <laughs> quotes. Like, I'm no, trying to think no, of when the Leafs no. ever did that. Like, I think guys were able to get information, but, like, you don't dare leak it. No. Because you, right, that general correct, manager yeah. is going to kick yeah. that player in the head. Right. And I mean, who knows what Lou does at this point, right? I, I think, as you said, Steve, that Lee is probably, Lou is probably best served in the president's role, right? And I think yeah. Adam said it, Adam said it perfectly as well, like being the boss, like overseeing everything. So who knows if, uh, if upcoming we see uh, possibly Hunter come in uh, and, and take over that GM role and then kind of push Lou back into that oversight boss role. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's a definite possibility and something that um, would definitely definitely probably interest Lamarillo at this point. Last last big question here, because I want I want to get your thoughts on this. You, as a Islanders reporter, have dealt with Lou Lamarillo for years, you know, when he was with the Devils and that sort of thing, too. Mm-hmm. This statement on the Islanders' Twitter, the New York Islanders would like to thank John Tavares for everything he has done for the franchise throughout the past nine seasons. John has achieved great individual success on the ice, as well as <laughs> devoting a tremendous amount of time, uh, sorry, his time and energy to the community. We wish him and his family all the best. The key here is John has achieved great individual success. People were wondering if that was a little bit of shade. What are your thoughts? I think it was a little bit of shade. <laughs> and um, Of course, I don't know for sure, and I'll never know for sure, Um and if I didn't know for sure, as Steve said, I wouldn't say anything because I'd be I'd be having to look over my shoulder for the next uh, year. Maybe go into the. Uh, I mean, I'd have to I'd have to call up my uh, my PHWA rep Arthur and kind of tell him to put me in the uh, protection plan there to kind of get myself away from it. But um, I think I think it, it had to be a little shade, right? I mean, right after that happens, the next day at Northville Health Ice Center, their practice facility, everything John Tavares related is taken down. Everything, posters. Stickies, decals, anything John Tavares related is gone. <laughs> I mean, Lou didn't waste any time once John made his decision in, in, in kind of erasing him, let's call it, quote unquote, from from anything organization related, whether it be at the practice facility or not. So adding those all those factors up, I'd have to I'd have to say that with a little bit of shade. Okay. And but at the same time it's true. Right? It's, you can't argue it, but I tend to place more of that blame on the fact that they didn't surround John with what he needed uh, for the team to be a contender. Exactly. No, so in goal and on defense. And they, they just didn't. For all the talk about how John Tavares deceived the Islanders, maybe the Islanders deceived John Tavares. Whoa, that's pretty big. Well, and it's funny. I was watching John Tavares highlights. There's a there's a video on YouTube that is just called 10 Minutes of John Tavares Highlights, and <laughs> it's great. Uh, of and, course you were. Of course you were. Oh, it's the best. <laughs> and one is that series against Florida, and there's absolutely yep. no chance they win that without him. Nope. None. Zero. And that's just forgotten in a matter of, with a matter of one decision that John made in the benefit of him and his family. It's gone. Yeah, and I don't know how you, I don't know how you reconcile that as a fan. I don't. I don't. And don't get me wrong. I'm not throwing shade at the fan. I don't blame them for being angry and hurt and upset. But if they could just channel that and redirect it to the proper place, I would be more comfortable with it. Um, I think you guys are going to absolutely love him. I think it's going to be. You know, he's going to. Let's just get this out there. He's going to go through his stretches where he's going to go through his two three weeks where he has a rough rough little patch there and. Uh, I don't see him as a 60 goal, 120 point guy. Let's not go crazy, but I, I, I you guys are going to absolutely love his leadership, his professionalism. He's going to have a tremendous effect on Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner right down the line. Uh, I just think it's going to be, it's going to be tremendous. Their window is so wide open right now. If they just patch up that defense a little more behind uh, Riley and Gardner, I think they're in, they're in tremendous, tremendous shape. How much money do you think he makes for Mitch Marner? <laughs> do we do you sign the extension now or do you sign it next summer? Well, he turned Josh Bailey into a five million dollar guy. He made Anders Lee uh, a forty goal scorer. So I, I think he's going to have he's going to make Mitch Marner a lot of money. Yeah, I tend to think of the same way in, as Jordan Everly and Anders Lee, both facing unrestricted free agency next season. Right? How much money can Matthew Barzal possibly make them this year? Right, 
Right. Fair enough. That's a good point. Wow. Andy, uh, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for, for your time today and, and uh, your humor. And, and on a fan, from a fan perspective, we, we do genuinely feel for you. No, you don't. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. You know why? Wayne it. I don't forget. I don't forget. I don't forget. Um, look, look. I, I, I listen to your show all the time. I watch Steve's videos all the time. I think you guys do a tremendous job. And uh, as I said, to all Leaf fans, just sit back and enjoy them. Oh, thanks, buddy. Take care. We'll, we'll have you on right, mid-season. Guys, have a good night. <laughs> sure, yeah, take Absolutely. Care. Thank you. I'll be, be, I'd love to. Andy Graziano, WFAN 660, and the host of the Secondary Pod. Download it on iTunes. And, uh, okay, uh, so let's just, let's just call it as it is. You could feel the pain in Andy's voice a little bit there when he's talking about oh. the, just the, the, the fact that they lost him, and he took his few minutes. And, by the way, imagine having a kid, and that kid cheers for the Montreal Canadiens. Like, imagine Steve Dangle's child. What is it like to be your dad? Because <laughs> his, his kid's a Rangers fan. How that, did that happen? That'd be rough. That'd be it's rough. It's not the same. Comparing not, the Islanders and the Rangers is like, a comparison. They hate yeah, each other. They hate each other, for sure. Yeah, like Mets Yankees. It, one's, one's a lot better than the other. <laughs> wow. That's probably why his kid's I'm a Rangers fan. i something that's wow-worthy. <laughs> it hasn't always been that <laughs> way. Wow, oh, Jen oh, Pot cake alert! Okay, Rangers have a more have more history than the Islanders. No, who would you oh rather have? Who would you rather have, Robin Leonard or Henrik Lundqvist? <laughs> That's the question. Take a time That's, to think that about it. That is a question. That's the same question I was asking. <laughs> was it, was Lundqvist ever the World Junior goalie? I don't know. Leonard was. Uh, you you uh, win. He probably was actually. <laughs> <Shut> <laughs> anyway, up, <Jesse. laughs> hey, shut up. So Elliot Friedman Thank said said something in an interview that got the Twitter world to Twitter, and I have to tell you, this is not going to happen. But I'm going to bring it up anyway, just because I got it tweeted at me so many times, and that is this. Friedman said, "I had a general manager say to me yesterday, I bet you my house that the Islanders are going to offer sheet someone in Toronto. If I were Elliot Friedman, I would take the house because the house is already yours. You know why?" Mm-hmm. First off, nobody offers sheets in the NHL. Second, if they're offer sheeting Nylander, they'd have to sign a. De- he'd have to actually sign a deal. Like just because you op- you offer someone a contract yeah, doesn't mean they have to sign it. Yeah. So he'd f- actually have to sign and go. Yes, I would like to go to the New York Islanders. The Leafs have twelve million in cap room and can match anything. But most importantly, the Islanders, if they wanted to, and I think Lou is a guy that in this situation, I suspect he might. They don't have the picks this year to do it. No, and but you can reacquire them, which we saw Brian Berg do. But it would have to be their own picks. Their own yes. picks. They have well, to get their own it. picks back. You have to go out and get your own picks and overpay for so them. So Leafs did it. I know where their and picks are. And didn't use them for some stupid reason. So no. here's, here's what they'd have to do, because the Islanders do not have their own picks beyond the first round until the fifth in 2019. Their second pick Ooh. was traded to Vegas, uh, in that trade that involved Grabowski, and uh, it also involved their 15th overall, which was Eric Braniston. Their third pick traded to Edmonton this spring for Brandon Davidson. Only Garth, oh. <laughs> oh. only Garth Snow could. That's Garth Snow's parting gift to New York. And it, their fourth pick was part of the Travis Hamannick deal, and it was Calgary Calgary's decision whether or not they gave them this year's second round pick or next year's second round pick. And that way, the Islanders, the conditional fourth the Islanders threw their way was whatever year Calgary gave them. So, so it sounds like it's not even in the It's realm not of even the realm of possibilities. Here's the thing, people are like, well, I mean, for, with a certain contract, there's a no. third certain contract, there's a second certain contract, is the first they still have their first. Well, actually it goes third, second, first and third. Mm-hmm. And that's between 4 and 6 million dollars when you RFA somebody. So you actually cannot if you are the New York Islanders do it. Well, and I know it's Lou Lamorello and there are other teams in the league that uh, are probably interested. But uh, I am reminded of the phrase, I am not the one. The Leafs are not the one. <coughs> they have more money than you, and they have their picks. Mm-hmm. Don't touch them. They'll murder you. Oh, you're going to offer sheet our guy. All right. I'm sure that won't come back to bite you, ever. I'm sh- Ah, I see you have lots of lovely RFAs. Be a shame if someone offer sheeted seven of them. It's the Leafs. Don't do it. I don't think it'd be a good idea. Have the Leafs ever been offer sheeted? No, I don't think so. And I don't, like maybe in like the eighties, yeah, maybe. Yeah, but I, no one in the NHL is really offer sheeted. No, not really. It's not not since Dustin Petter yeah. and his pancakes. I think you know when Dubas talked about market inefficiencies. I mean, that is one 
It's mm-hmm. a thing in the rules that nobody uses. Um, I think it'll take one GM to do it, and then I think others will follow, but <laughs> who's going to be the first? Right, exactly. And if you are a GM with notable RFAs coming up, do you want to be the one that tips that scale right away? And do you want to do it to the Leafs? <laughs> well, no, no, but if you're Dubis, you don't want to open that can of worms yet. No, no, I don't think so. I think you got you got to figure out Nylander, which I'm sure... I don't they're... think you need to. Well, I don't think really? you need to as well. I mean, you don't need to pay big money for other people anymore. Um, Leafs are in a decent position. Everyone's talking about how they're in this cap crunch. Well, actually... Buddy, they're working on it. Do you want to know what Mark Bergevin said? Because Mark Bergevin said this. Here's how Mark Bergevin says, Of course, on paper, they have a better team mm. than the Habs. On but paper. In it's, it's, he's not wrong. <laughs> when, you, when you start... He's Mark... Season, on paper. You know what Mark Bergevin's doing. How many games have been played, Adam? Zero games, Jesse. Thank you. Zero games. Thank you. Um, I'm wondering... Did you pick Vegas to go to the Stanley Cup final? I did not. You're Thank right. You. That's fair. Fair. Now, here's... Counterpoint. Uh, on paper, <laughs> Stan's house league hockey team <laughs> has never played the Detroit Red Wings. <laughs> <laughs> However, <laughs> if I had to bet, I'm going to bet on the Red Wings. Fair. Um, Robin paper. Lanner, I, 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 it was it was reported this afternoon uh, by James Myrtle that they were getting close. I guess he signed he since is. we started. Um, it's a decent deal. I was pushing hard for Eric Carlson, which would be an amazing success for them, but as we said, probably not. Uh, they prob- are still pretty weak up the middle. Mm-hmm. They need to fix that. So let's let's talk about this from the Toronto perspective because I think we got a good Islander side. How does this affect the Leafs? <laughs> Can we talk Thank about you, how Adam. this affects the Leafs? Yeah. Well, one thing I found very interesting is they they talked, I guess, in in the presentation meeting, and then Mike Babcock showed up at the press conference and sat in the front row and asked if he could ask a question too. And everyone yeah. laughed. Oh, Mikey! Um, oh, he's not a. <laughs> He's not a reporter. He can't. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> how it was. <laughs> this, <laughs> this guy. What? I didn't. I didn't realize we were at Yuck Yucks, there, Mikey. Oh, oh, oh my God. <laughs> that is why they call him Open Mike. Oh, oh, oh wow. This guy. Wow. Oh, this, open Mike. He's got jokes. That's not bad. He's that's got like, jokes. He's I'm got impressed. sex and jokes. This is the last like show of the season until we take a break. I'm impressed by Steve. You, you seem fresh, man. You I'm seem going. like you're good. I'm not done my coffee. That's um. Fine. From the least perspective, one of the, the major things that came out of this is who John Tavares will play with and who Ooh. Austin Matthews will play with because that's going to change. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's going to. And what's interesting about this is the, the lineups are set on July third. Yeah. I know, but here's what here's what Mike Babcock said. And let's <laughs> just, Matthews will play with Marlow day one. Mark my shut up. Yes. Well, and that was the thing. They've actually he said I'm going to pull Hyman off of Matthews' wing. I'm going to put him with Tavares. And put Tavares with Marner, and it's interesting. I think it's interesting, and I think it's interesting that he had Marlow Matthews uh, Nylander as well. Now, God, is that such a good line? That is both of those lines are scary. And Justin Bourne said that's actually not what he would do, and that's fine. Like Babcock, who cares? Has the best problem in the world. I think everyone seems to agree that Kadri centering Janssen and Kapanen is going to be sick. But yeah. um, do whatever you want with those other six guys. And yeah. Then, uh, the fourth line should be Lindholm, Levo, Brown. Uh, they are they are right apparently exploring trade options with Levo. Yeah, who's uh, this? Uh, uh, David Pagnotta. Oh, ah, yeah. okay. I mean, play him or or don't for mm-hmm. crying out loud. <laughs> the poor guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, I hope and, he has success. The guy hasn't played hockey for like two years. Yeah, I I, I hope they actually keep him and play him because why not? Right. Um, that would be cool. Yeah. And and. Um, I'm excited for Par Lindholm. Lindholm, I mean, Josh Joris did was signed to at least give him some competition for that fourth line role, and maybe carry him as an extra forward. I mean, it'd probably be a little bit more useful than mm-hmm. Levo. You know, like they they got guys they can call up and fill in a fourth line wing spot, no problem, and not you know be on for five goals against every game. But center, like the Leafs are hurting. They could use an extra center to carry the around. The Leafs are hurting, hurting at center. center. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. In the event of an injury, they're hurting a little bit. Uh, I mean... I don't, I don't know. Patrick Marlowe played Inter- center. Okay, in terms of well. guys they can call up. Oh, okay. There we go. Sorry. Sure. They're not hurting at all, but in terms of guys they can call up, well, what are their options? List them off. They got, like, Adam Brooks, Freddie Gauthier... 
if Freddie Goji gets resigned. Are, if Freddie Goji gets yeah, because I don't. What scenario is this? He was he was by the way he was qualified. The scenarios that have happened to the Leafs in recent memory. Remember friggin' you mentioned his name earlier. What the hell was that? Josh Jurich? Jared Smithson. Remember that whole debacle? Yeah. The Jared Leafs Smithson. had to get Peter Holland, and they're like, "Hey, you're a first line center. Good luck, kid." Yes. It's happened. Yeah. Injuries happen. Injuries yes. happen. Don't we're, say we're, but we're also it, having fun no, at your No, they're expense. definitely not hurting <laughs> at center. Which is something we're known to do on this show. <laughs> How long after Adam said I was fresh did I say we're hurting at center? Holy shit. What a dummy. I'm sorry. So, the line combinations are going to be fun and they're going to be cool. And, and, and you know, obviously we're all going to take a little... They're going to be fun and they're going to be cool. Uh, you know, we're, we're all, we'll see them in exhibition. I bet you the Leafs sell out every exhibition game this year. For sure. I'm going to every stinking one I can go to. What do they even do? Like, for exhibition? Like, you're just, just playing... Play the Marlies. Marlies, like, to yeah. give them a cool thrill at that point. Um, there are... Hey, you get to put on a Leafs jersey. <laughs> it's funny, uh, you know, you would think, and if you're an Islanders fan listening to this, you must think that the Toronto media is just fawning, fawning over this team. And I have to tell you, they're not. And I'm going to tell you four different stupid oh, questions, mm-hmm. four major stupid questions... From from people that are considered hockey men, Ugh. that are being asked. So the first question is, can they keep the big four together? The answer is unequivocally yes. I like how it's the big four now. It is the big four. Mm, the four can they horsemen. keep the four together? A hundred percent they can. People are like, well, that'll take X amount of the salary cap. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's what it'll take. Listen, Name you four- shouldn't do that with most... Four. Foursomes, but this is one that you do it. This with. is what, yeah. Yep. This is how. You, this is what you do. Um, how will they find time for all three centers? As in Austin Matthews, John Tavares, Nazem Kadri. How are they going to find enough time? Well, here's the thing. Oh no! Here's the thing, and and I had some. I, I understand why people are saying this because they're like, Mike Babcock likes to run four lines. Well, now I think there's a good argument to be said that he probably won't. Yeah, he's <laughs> been. Pro- he's shown that he can adapt. He's not an idiot. He knows what team he has. He's not going to bumble it around and go, I don't know what to do with this. I don't think the fourth line is going to get much more than about seven, eight minutes a night. I think you're going to see uh, 18 minutes even from Tavares, Kadri, Matthews, depending <laughs> on, upon their roles. And by the way, yeah, like, Tavares is a penalty killer. Yeah, exactly. And I'm not sure if they'll put him in that role. I don't know if they need to. But that's an interesting thing. If they've got a, uh, especially in the faceoff dot, if they've got a key faceoff, which they really struggled with uh, sh- in shorthanded situations they didn't last have year. A center, other than Moore, who when they didn't play him, they literally did not have a center killing penalties. That is a guy that you go, okay, I'm going to put you out there, and then we're going to flip you. Like if I'm going to put you out there with Hyman, and then I need you to come to the bench for Brown right after you win the center or the something off. like that, or something like that. I mean, Hyman got better at draws as the season went on. Lindholm will hopefully kill. Uh, yeah, you mentioned Brown too. Uh, but dude, I'm not. I'm not worried about that. Like at, at five on five, they're assassins. They're and the, murderers. Can I go back to your question for the uh, your first question? To keep the big four together. Yeah, just in terms of the money this year. Um, we had this little thing about the the three centers around the league. So Malkin, Crosby, and Brassard combined for twenty one point two million dollars. Kunetsov, Batstrom, and Eller combined for eighteen, mm-hmm. and Tavares, Kadri, and Matthews combined for sixteen point four. So the money in Toronto is looking pretty nice. It is looking pretty nice. Next year, it's going to be looking not as nice. Mm-hmm. But okay, so is it a, though? Because you still have those players. You still have those players. Exactly. Shit. <laughs> I don't well, care. And here's where this little chart is wrong, and it's been making the rounds. It mm-hmm. says Matthews 0.9. That's not entirely true because he usually it's hits really his three. bonuses. Sure. It's like three point something. Mm-hmm. Um, but also. There was a time where 9.5 for Malkin, 8.7 for Crosby, and 3 million for your third line center, whoever it is, was a shit ton of money, and it was a way bigger percentage of your cap. Yeah, Yeah. like how long have have those two guys had that contract? Oh, God. Like half a decade at least? Like, go back to 2013 or whatever it was. It was... How the hell are they going to keep them together? They found a way. They won two cups. And and that's that's the key. And then they added Phil Kessel, right? Yeah. we. Do, I love how Dubas is currently answering the question that we made fun of uh, on the on a few of the most recent shows. How are they going to afford it? And with every move he makes, he's going, here's how. Are you bringing up Bozak's Players Tribune and Phil Kessel? Oh, yeah. Getting all okay. the, uh, to all that. Uh, that made me to all up. that. But we're still on Tavares for <laughs> yes, this yes, for the moment. Mentioned Kessel. And, and yeah, I know. Oh, my God. So funny. But... Uh, uh, in this particular case, um, I, I keep hearing that that question about those guys. Well, with Matt Martin's salary gone, we're back up to $16.1 million in cap space. For next year. For next year. 
You got you obviously you got Nylander sign again. We think we think maybe six six and a half for him. What's Janssen going to get? What's Goche going to get? It depends on term. Jakey. Well, Jake, yeah, Jake, yeah, and That's we'll an talk about Jake one. too because I want I do want to get to that. But here's the here's the 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 third dumb question I keep hearing, mm-hmm. and this was brought to us by so many guys, but namely a guy. Uh, who is having a bit of a rough year, I think, and that's uh, uh, NHL by Matty. <laughs> oh, dude. What are you saying? Uh, well, we're, uh, he, he said... What is his actual name? Maybe uh, Matt... Uh, Jim Matheson. Jim Matheson. Took he me said, a second. Uh, yeah, it took me a second, too. Uh, he said, maybe I'm stupid. Again? You know. started another tweet with you, that? You could call me stupid, and then Justin Fisher retweeted him and said, you're, you're stupid. stupid. <laughs> Mark said, Rackham did that, Mark UK Leaf, and my favorite thing about that was it was on Canada Day. I know he was at the Maple Leaf in London and hammered. That's amazing. It just made me feel good to picture it. Um, the uh, <laughs> That's my favorite. Um, he said something to the effect of, call me, call me stupid, but the Leafs could use Eric Carlson a heck of a lot more than they could use John Tavares. Now, I know that I know from your faces that's the case, and I understand the whole. The Leafs need to patch up their defense, as Andy Graziano said. However, unless I'm mistaken, is Eric Carlson available on the market for free? Uh huh. For nothing. For nothing. Nothing. Oh, that's that's right. He's not. Ah, okay. Ah. Well, here's the other thing. And I really want you to, if you truly believe that Leafs defense needs to needs a, an upgrade, which I do, I have to disagree on what kind of an upgrade. Because you, you, they talk about people talk about this number one defenseman. The Leafs need a number one guy. Well, how many guys in the league are really truly number one, Steve? OEL, Drew Doughty, Eric Carlson. Who else? Who would you put in that category? You uh, wouldn't put Aaron Eckblad in that category. Put in, couldn't Duncan put, Keith, but I don't know if he's there anymore. But he used to be. You put used Subban. to be. Subban. Subban, yeah, I would even maybe put, a couple guys. On yeah, that. maybe sure. Roman Yossi. Maybe three guys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, not Roman Yossi. First pair, not number one. Um, it's difficult without a list in front of me. So Jesse, can is there any way to bring up the up, highest uh, paid defense defenseman? Like by based contract. on what I've seen, like Klingberg, even though he yeah. puts up the numbers, is a, is a bit of a stretch. Uh, Carlson, even though he puts up numbers, is a bit of a stretch. Sorry, John Carlson, that is. Um, oh, I don't think John Carlson's in that league. No. I don't think anybody thinks You're John Carlson's in that league. the highest paid defenseman in the NHL. Subban? Yep. Burns? Yep. Hedman? Yep. Weber? Mm-hmm. Mm, used to be. Bifuglian? <laughs> uh, I mean, I very, d- very good. I wouldn't call him a number one. No. Eh, I disagree. A number one? Like, okay, you're yeah. talking like Victor Hedman and Dustin Bufflin. You know what I mean? Yeah, man, I, I don't see that. I don't Whatever the tier right under that is, that's where okay. Buffalo is. It's him. Like he's okay. extraordinarily good. That's fair. I'll get, yeah, we're yeah, talking yeah. the best. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Suter, Aaron Not Ekblad, no. Chris quite. Letang. Not anymore. No. Fanoff. Absolutely. Nope. Not. And then we're reaching ten at Dowdy. Mm-hmm. Seabrook's eleven. Nope. Giordano's twelve. Used to be. Shattenkirk's maybe. thirteen. Nope. Carlson fourteen. Yes. Um, Pietrangelo, fifteen. Yes. Yeah, I would call him a number one guy. Keith Yandel, Mike Green, Eric Johnson, Johnny Boychuk. We're getting to the yeah. So, yeah. so you you see my point? It's less than ten guys. Yeah. So you have four guys who are probably going to finish top twenty in the NHL in scoring. Is that hard? Is that hard? Is that a reach? Oh my god! You have four guys who are going to be top four. Oh my god! And I, here's what I want to say: anybody that's saying that is not looking at other sports. They're not looking at specifically football. And I, I hate to bring this up as an example, but you got to look at the New England Patriots. When Tom Brady first took over for uh, what was his name? Uh, Drew Bledsoe. Drew Bledsoe. Wow, both of you guys. New England was a defensive. How did we get that? I know. It's yeah. great. I know. I should <laughs> specifically. How did I? Get yeah. That? I thought you would know that, but yeah, anyway. <laughs> Keep moving on. Yes. <laughs> New England was a defensive juggernaut at that point. They were not a very offensive team. But in the years that have passed, obviously Tom Brady's gotten better. They've signed guys like Randy Moss and whatever, and they've they found these guys, and the offense has become New England's thing. And what they have done, which is what you need to do in a cap world, is keep your stars under contract, sign the guys who are big names when you can. The Leafs have, have done that with the first two. And then you got to find role players that complement those stars. New England is crazy good in the draft at finding guys who can do one thing well. You, 
you're in you're in high school, you're in college right now. You do this one thing. You yep. come to you come to New England. You do this one thing for Bill Belichick. Do this one thing, and you're going to play. If you don't do it, you're out. You're gone. You're gone. Um, Leafs, Leafs need defensemen who can do this one thing, and this one thing is this. Defensive zone exits. Well, they or need, entries. Or entries. Yeah. They need beasts. They need guys who can collect the puck, because the puck is going to go into your zone, and do a couple of, couple of strides, pass the puck out. Or guys who are just generally competent under pressure. Like, I... I mm. Like, it's not... This. My mind, I'm scarred by that Jake DeBrus goal. <laughs> I'm just so permanently scarred by it. Like, man, we can't get... We can't get a stop there. Mm-hmm. We gotta get a stop there. I'm not talking about Freddie. I'm talking about that puck doesn't get to the net. And sorry, what I was looking up on my phone there was... I want to say it was Evan Presment. Presmont. I'm not sure mm-hmm. how you say his name. But he went through the uh, defense cores of the Capitals who won this year and the back-to-back Penguins Cups. And it's pretty unremarkable. Well, I was going to bring those guys up. Incredibly unremarkable. And I put the Leafs decor up against those guys. I really would. Ron Hainsey was on one of them. <laughs> I, I put him up against one of those guys. Now, that's not necessarily the model because then you go back to... You know, Chicago, Chicago but LA. Even they, they had a sick top four and nothing. Yeah, they like had, Kimo Timonen, who they played two minutes a night. Oh my God. Right? They ran four guys until, you know, if if Duncan Keith does not have the, you know, the VO2 of a Tour de France athlete, uh, you don't win any of those cups. And uh, the Kings obviously had a, had a sick decor. But the past three years, you can do it. You can do it. The idea that the Leafs, who had 105 points last year and just added John Tavares, the idea that they can't do it with this group is, is ridiculous. You to need me. To guy- they should upgrade, though. Fine, yes. Find the guys, though, that it's- can just get the puck out of the zone into the forwards. That's yeah. all you need to do. I don't need you to score 50 points because I got two defensemen who can do that Morgan Riley, Jake Gardner. I need guys who can competently get the puck, corral it in their own zone, and get it out. Guys who get third assists. Yes, <laughs> yes. Assists. The Thomas Carberlays. <laughs> mm, well, well, even pre, uh, he was the second assist. I'm trying to think of like who does that really well in the league. Oh shoot, Berkshire wrote a really good article on one of them. Damn, I'm trying to remember who it That's was. That's really good. But I, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought I thought it would come to me and it didn't. Jesse, what are you looking I, at? I hadn't seen Jim Matheson's tweet, and I think my favorite part of it is when he says "hell of a." And he actually uses the word H E L L U V A. Like mm-hmm. good dip? Hell good. of a good dip? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Anyways. I was about to say, Jesse. He actually does never... say, okay. call me stupid, but Leafs need air calls. I didn't believe it, but it's true. It's... Oh, you actually didn't believe that he said it? I, I just didn't know it was those exact words. That is exactly what he said. <laughs> It's very plain. <laughs> he, said, he, he said, call me stupid, but the Leafs need Eric Carlson a hell of a lot more than the, they need John Tavares, and that's very well, uh, hometown boy else. <laughs> goes to his childhood team, leaves money on the table, and he's the big fish free agent, and people cannot explain why it's a bad thing fast enough. Well, and this is what I'm talking about. I, we I have just people don't on the radio in this city going... Well, yeah, but they don't have a star defenseman. Guys, this is not going to be a team that has a star Drew Doughty, Eric Carlson type defense. They can't afford that right now. Brian Burke's been disappointing in this conversation. Because, oh, okay, my God. He's been excellent on Sportsnet. His behind-the-scenes stuff is really good. But whenever this comes up, he just goes, I, I don't know how you trade Nylander. What how do you, you mean don't, you don't you, know? You're, you used to be a GM. Get creative. Think about I, it. How you don't trade Nylander. That's what he's saying. He wants to. They're, they're trying to trade him. Can Jim Matheson weigh into this conversation? What did he say? He said, Leafs indeed deep at sea with Tavares, Matthews, Kadri. But again, they have a very ordinary back end, and the puck will be in their end at times during games. That's true. I will read that again. <laughs> the puck will be in their end at times during games. Fact. They may be forced to trade Nylander to get a defenseman no. who can play in their top two. They Not act like going the Leafs team, like when the puck goes in the corner, ah! <laughs> <laughs> run in a freaking circle. <laughs> what do I do with this? They're inside their own blue line. I've never played before. And their <laughs> pants just turn brown. Adam, they just don't know. It. <laughs> they have no idea. Adam. Jesse. If Jim Madison was sitting here and he said they may be forced to trade Nylander to get a defenseman, who can play in their top two, 
What would you tell him? I would tell him that there, that you are not looking close enough at this picture. I would tell him that, yes, agreed they need to upgrade on defense. No. But what kind of defense do they need to upgrade on? And for me, it's zone exits. You're going to, yes, you want to stop, prevent zone e- entries, right? You want to do that. I get that. Nylander in a first for Darnell Nurse. But as Jim Matheson rightly pointed out, the puck will be in their zone. And the key for the Leafs this season is going to be evenness on the right and left side and the ability to get the puck past their own blue line and to their extremely deep and extremely talented forwards. Yeah. So find that zone exit beast or two of them on the right side and you're fine. And a big problem I thought the Leafs had was they didn't get enough forward support. And yes. Tavares uh, is very good at that. Mm-hmm. And Matthew's assignments all become easier. Dello had a great thing. Um... Last year, Matthews faced other teams' top pairings. I think it was about 55% of the time, and Tavares faced top pairings about 57% of the time, and Bozak only faced them like 33% of the time or something like that. So the the workload, or I guess the quality of competition for both Matthews and Tavares and possibly Kadri, it's going to drop for all of them. It'll be like 50-50, and then Kadri be zero. Yeah. <laughs> Kadri will get 40 goals the this 40 year. 40-goal <laughs> season, Nazem Kadri, best contract well, in the league. And and, so, and now they got to trade him. Oh, yeah, they trade, trade the high. best. They just you figured out their set of Kadri. <laughs> trade to bring Kadri. in <laughs> Chris Tanev. <laughs> Kadri in a first for Tanev. Well, and, and Andrew Walker, who I know is divisive among our audience, but I, I love him. He's a great guy. And he, he was saying to Vancouver fans, you understand what an ask for Nylander would be. It would be like Elias Pettersson, Tanev, and a first. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, and it might even be more. He's You're like, paying for a superstar. Yeah. yeah this is right. a guy that uh, is, is coming in just under. Uh, at the in the same amount of games, what John Tavares was pl- was producing yeah. in at the same age, like points per game. And if they really wanted to, they could make him center. Yeah, of course. Now this is the interesting thing with. So I I do have some concern with Nylander and Marner's future number. Nylander, hopefully, very near future number. And where's this ten million for Marner coming out of? Okay, so what what Kiprio said, and I understand the thinking, is if you're Marner, what's your rush to sign an extension? Your coach just said, we're going to play you with Tavares. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not out of the question he could win a scoring title (laughs) next year. Yeah, No, it's not. You're right. And, dude, you win the Art Ross in a contract year? Woo-hoo-hoo! Great problem Cha-ching. to have. Yeah, Great problem to have. When people extension. say double digits for Marner, it makes sense. Because it, he could go out and have a season where he performs like a double digit player. Yeah. But that's like dumb. Like yeah. The, the, okay, you can have two guys like this. I don't know if you can have three. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Marner was also part of the recruiting process, and I'm sure he would like to win as well. And he knows. Win here. Yeah. He knows that they can't have three. $11 million guys or whatever. So what's that number going to be like? Conversely, William Nylander, if he stays in Toronto, he's going to have all kinds of success. He's going to put up a ton of points. Uh, he's basically like what these deals have done, or these deals, what Tavares' deal has done, he's probably never going to be a full-time center. When? Mm-hmm. When's it going to happen? Like Matthews is going to be elite forever. Kadri's contract has four years left. What, does he become a center after Kadri's gone? <laughs> or, and, and it doesn't really matter. That's way too far ahead. The point is, these guys... What do you want to do? What do you want to be? Yeah. And I, I, I have a feeling that they all don't care. They just want to yeah. win the cup. And that brings yeah. me what, to the, What do you want to be? A winner. <laughs> yeah. That brings me to my fourth point. And this is another dumb question. I understand the reason asking it at the press conference, but now it's become a debate. Kyle Dubas rightly shut this down at the press conference, and now it's a debate. And this is what's bothering me. Who will be the captain? The instant thought is, well, Matthews has got to be pissed. Nope. Why would Austin Matthews be pissed that John Tavares is coming to Toronto? If you're Austin Matthews and you're 21, and you're not, John, Austin Matthews is not a showy guy. It's, well, he's I, not I like, think uh, there's an aspect of him that is. His favorite player is Wessel, uh, Russell Westbrook. Which I, it, I appreciate. It says a lot. I don't think at this point, that it matters who the captain is. And I think they all know that. It, the Russell Westbrook thing makes so much sense with Matthews, too. Like, he's Sweet. got the flash, but it's like, don't bother me. 
Also, yeah. like he just doesn't. He doesn't want to talk to you. He wants to go out there. He wants to handle his business. Have some fun. If you're Austin Matthews, crush, <laughs> just you're, crush. You're Austin Matthews. You know that eventually you're going to be Leafs captain anyway. If you're John Tavares, you know that Austin Matthews is going to be the captain eventually anyways. Yeah. If John, if John is the captain first and then gives it up to Austin in a couple years, or if they have no captain this year, which is what I honestly think they're going they to do. They don't need one. Why have a captain? Haven't the past two years taught you anything? They don't need one. What do you think they're going to get an extra seven, eight points in the standings when the... Oh, oh well, they got the seat. It's like a power-up. This isn't Pokemon cards, guys. <laughs> it's a hockey team with three amazing centers. It, it doesn't... I don't think it does anything. I don't think it does anything. I think John Tavares is the captain. They'll give it to him. By the time the season rolls around, it'll be like September, and then they'll, have a, they'll have a reintroduction kind of of John Tavares for like the season, I'm guessing. But do we, and then they'll give him the captain. See, I take Kyle Dubas at his word what he said at the press conference, which was once we if we bestow that on somebody when they've just started with the team, normally that's, that is a negative way. That, 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 that ends up negative. He said, I want to see how this group comes together. One thing that was interesting, I think it was Myrtle pointed it out or whatever. Some reporters wanted a picture of Tavares wearing the jersey oh. that he was holding, and the Leafs wouldn't let them take it. So what they might be doing is their own sort of shoot and maybe waiting to unveil him as captain in that regard. I don't know. But it'd be funny because they've sold so many Tavares jerseys already, sealess, that as Jeff Vea tweeted, because he was at the real sports store, they ran out of A's. Wow. They ran out of the letter A. <laughs> so wow. They had to order more A's so they can make the jerseys. That's amazing. That's unbelievable. I would, you know what would be a great story? Just on this thing, it would be really great if Austin Matthews was the captain of this team and John Tavares said, you know what? This is your team. Yep. I'm going to back you up. I just got here. You're the captain. You need more than one leader. Yeah. Yeah, you need leaders. I, okay, Matthew C, Tavares A. Like, who cares? I, like, I don't who even want to have this conversation. Like, they're so good. They're so good, guys. Focus on that. But the captaincy. <laughs> they haven't played a game. They're not good at it. They're anything. going yes. to be good. <laughs> Jesse, be, Jesse Bergevin over there. I wouldn't they're be totally paper. surprised if they struggle out of the gate. I mean, Freddie has a history of struggling around October. That's a pretty big change to the lineup, and you know there's been a fair amount of turnover as well. But once they start clicking, I think they're going to be pretty gross. Well, on paper, <laughs> and it'll be cool one to game see. Before you say they're good, on paper. Play By game. the way, everybody that puts <laughs> Connor Brown on the fourth line, I think you're, I think you're dreaming. Connor Brown starts on the third line. You know why? You think? Because Ty goes to the veteran. Wow, very interesting. No, but the third hmm. line's Janssen, Kadri, Kapanen. Or Mike Babcock goes, no, to one of them, you have to, well, it's Kapanen, right? Kapanen's the right right side? Yeah. yeah. He probably says, well, you have to learn, have to earn it. <laughs> you don't think that's so? That's the third line. Kapanen is a, I no, mean, they switch no, sometimes. No. Yeah. Whatever. It's not the worst thing. <laughs> Dude, Connor Brown scored 20 goals as a rookie. Yeah. And he scored 14 as a by the, rover, By the basically. way, people rightly came after me about saying that I, that, that the, the, uh, Bozak Van Reems like Brown line wasn't very good, and they and they were they said you know they, they had positive Corsi. But I was surprised to see that, but the sheltering of that unit yeah. is also key, right? You, you said, 30, said they weren't good. I well, said I I, I, sure. I I thought they were ineffective five on five, one hundred percent. I thought they were fantastic on the power play. I don't though. like them in there. And by I the mean, way, Tavares they... slots in where JVR did on the on the power play, so it looks like it'll be Tavares uh, Matthews. <laughs> on the power well, on the same unit on the second that, yeah. on the second one that's what they're saying yeah ah! which is interesting yeah. or, or it may not be but they're just saying they're going to play Tavares in the same spot but he's going to be a bit more of a playmaker rather than he's not going to stand in front of the net the whole time obviously just put him in the in the D slot that'd be great too that's what I, would I think he's I think his, his his some of his strengths are pivoting in, like in close yeah, too right so yeah. It'd be kind of interesting to see him down low. I don't He's know. He's got the good hands. Man. Yeah. Who cares? You know what? You, you know what <laughs> who fucking cares? You know what signing Tavares has made me realize is uh, the Islanders aren't like well covered. Because I, I was watching all these highlights of him and I'm like, I've never seen that goal. <laughs> I've never seen this goal. I've never seen this. That's like a highlight of the night. Every single one of them. And I, there was one where he's wearing a Brooklyn jersey, the black one. And someone's like hanging off of him. He's holding on to the like the shaft of his stick and still corralling the puck. And he turns and spins and fires. I'd never seen it. Mm -hmm. And holy crap, that guy plays for my hockey team now. I'm very excited just, about it. Just a thought too on Calvin DeHaan because I'm still oh riding this. Riding we haven't this talked about Ryan O'Reilly once, and we're back on Calvin DeHaan. Calvin DeHaan. If you're j if you just signed John Tavares and you want Calvin DeHaan on the team, which they clearly do, 
Do you not say, John, can you, can you put in a call? Why not? And, Cal, and for everybody that says, what's the, wh- where would you put him? Well, we do have a 52-point defenseman whose contract is up at the end of the season who people would pay a lot for. Calvin. Ron Hainsey. Ron Hainsey. Calvin. I didn't say 52-minute a game player. Ah. I said 52-point getter. That's a good one. Um, <laughs> basically did play 52 minutes a game in the playoffs. Calvin, remember the last time you were on a team? John Tavares left it. Where were you stuck? That's right. Where was he stuck? Oshawa. Oh, that's right. Do you want to be that way, Calvin? Well, he's off playing. Left, wow, left his team to go play with Nazem Kadri's team. Again? (laughs) Wow, that's a good point. Wow. Again? (laughs) No, Calvin, come on, join a winner, buddy. Adam will love you. You'll never have to buy a drink if Adam is in that bar ever again. If Calvin DeHaan signs, I will buy a Calvin DeHaan jersey first. <laughs> Before <it> Tavares. <laughs> uh, I'm not what? surprised. We've been so excited that uh, we've forgotten that I booked another guest. <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll talk to Mike in a sec. Mike Stevens? <laughs> yes. Yeah, we'll talk to Mike in a sec. No, uh, but I told him 8.30 oh. and it's 9. <laughs> All right, is he, is he texting you going, hey? No, but he should be. Okay, so let's call him then. Yeah, let's call All right. him. Sure. Because I actually, I have Sorry, some questions guys. for Mike about a, a few things beyond Tavares. Uh, I'd love to talk about what, like, some of the other signings mean. Josh Juris, specifically, and Jordan Subban. So we'll get to that. Cover the AHL extensively. So welcoming on a guy who has many jobs, and he's also a U of T student. Uh, <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> Mike Stevens, writer at theleafsnation.com, Marley's beat writer for Fansided, and he is the head editor of Editor and Leaf. All three blocks. Mike, thank you so much for coming on. It's great to be on. Thanks for having me. So, obviously, we got to start with John Tavares. Who's uh, a Leaf? Who is a Leaf. Sorry. Uh, uh, where were you when Elliot Friedman sent out the tweet? Um, I was, uh, I was actually, it's a funny story. I was in my room, um, obviously watching the sports net coverage and things didn't really seem to be picking up too much as you know, there was just speculation, this and that. And then I looked at the tweet seven years for, uh, for Tavares for to Toronto. And that like, it did, I don't know, it still doesn't feel real. Like, no. I don't know about you guys, but it doesn't feel real to me. It, it really doesn't. Mike, is this a bigger story? Than the Marlies winning the Calder Cup. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I don't make, know. That's a real Sophie's choice right there. Like, how am I supposed to? Um, I think. I mean, I don't know. I, I can't. I, you know, I got to plead the fifth on that. I, I can't wow. really answer. Can't it's even my commit. Jo- it's my job. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not like Tavares. Okay, Tavares, <laughs> who hasn't played a game as a Leaf yet. Ben Smith hoisting the Calder Cup, and then signing in Europe. Come on. It's definitely, yeah, it's got to you know, be Ben Smith. Steve's got a point, Adam. I'm really sorry. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, I mean, we were all there for the biggest moment in, in Leafs, biggest championship in Leafs history since 1967. And I just want to say, I'm glad we were all there for it. Why Adam wanted you on was we want to know how the Marlies winning the Calder Cup affects the Leafs' chances of getting Calvin to hunt. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, okay, so Mike, quick question on that. Do you think. Do you see the uh, a situation where I mean, first off, Calvin DeHaan makes the team better for sure on the on the back end, you don't, right? You're just not letting that. go. I'm not letting it go. <laughs> <You're never> gonna... <laughs> am I, Do you am I crazy? Him money or something? These, these two guys <laughs> think that that I'm crazy for wanting him this badly. Am I wrong? I want him too, Doc. But like, what? you're not you're not wrong. And the, the funny thing about it is, like, he's a lefty, and yet everyone's really and everyone's so specific on the handedness of defensemen. Like, you could offer the best. Left D to Leafs fans possible, and they'd be like, "Well, he's not right-handed. We can't." Yeah, like, hey, we don't Aaron any- Carlson's available for the Leafs. No, left-handed. Sorry. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, exactly. And yet, Calvin DeHaan's up there, and everyone's like, "Get him, let's go." And fu- and funny to that, like, I, as in the midst of Tavares, I was so in shock that Thomas Hickey signed, mm-hmm. and I for for some reason I looked at that tweet and thought. That's Calvin DeHaan. And <laughs> so I tweeted at you being like, sorry, man. And you were like, doesn't matter. It's DeHaan. And I'm like, what? And yeah, it, that's how much in shock I was. It was, it was crazy. But yes, I think Calvin DeHaan, um, I, don't, I, I think coming, him coming to the Leafs not only affects the Leafs, it affects the Marlies as well. I don't know how. But it, it does. Well, uh, I, I have a theory as to how, and this is annoying. No, no, this is annoying, but genuinely. Um, you covered the Calder Cup playoffs. I did. The whole thing. Uh, uh, the whole season as well. The whole season. <laughs> the whole everything. <laughs> so I watched Travis Dermott 
And I go, that's a player with a superior skill set to his peers who, in my opinion, another year or maybe half year in the AHL, I, I don't think would kill him. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have to disagree with you on that one, man. Um, okay. And, and to- I totally see that. I, I saw what I saw from Travis Zimmerman was a guy who was down and just like living the dream. Like that was a guy who was down. He had just played in the game seven in the NHL and he was down there being like, I'm going to do everything. Um, he was, he was, there was definitely times where he was, he was sloppy. Like he, there was a couple of giveaways he would make in the, especially in the neutral zone. Cause he was, I think he was really trying to go end to end. Um, and he would, he would give him, there was times where he was giving it away in the neutral zone, a, like a lot. Um, there was times where he was losing his man. Like there was times where his coverage was a little off, especially in his own zone, but that's a guy who's a, a level above. And I think that, yeah, the, the gravity of the situation is, is legitimate. Um, you know, especially that it's in the call to cup playoffs. But I think that's a guy who is kind of told by his coach, like kind of be the better Justin Hall in the sense, like just be go Rover, like, do, do as much as you can all around the ice because the best thing about the Marlies is they were so structured in every single line, defense and forwards had their own specific goal and skill set that they executed to a T. So let Dermis could pinch, uh, Dermot, Dermis, Dermot could pinch down um, from the point and a guy like, and let's say the Timishaw, Mueller, Smith line was on. Timishaw would know immediately the second Dermot goes down from the point, he goes up to cover him. Vice versa on the other side, when Marinson would do the same thing, he'd pinch down. Um, I think a guy like, I think Dermot, he's got, I think he's ready. Like, I think he's ready to be, um, be not just like a good, maybe third pairing defenseman. I, look, call me crazy. I think he's ready for top four. And I think that, okay. um, I think, I don't know. I, I think that he, the way that he performed in the Calder Cup playoffs isn't really a testament. Like, I, I saw him assume, at the start of the season, assume ridiculously hard minutes like people forget he went 20 games without a goal to start the year oh yeah like I he, about that. yeah he and man that guy is just a, a, an aside hockey needs to spice up its uh its quotes that guy is going to lead the charge he is the <laughs> best quote ever he is so funny he is so he he that guy his, he's got piercing blue eyes cont- eye contact the whole time um he's a great guy to talk to I, and uh a guy who, who you know you want to you want to succeed, but um, yeah, he's he's a fantastic defender. To your point as well, though, I look if he, if he has to spend a half season in the AHL, I think it couldn't do him any wrong. Like I don't think it's a, it's a it's like a captain situation where there's literally nothing for him to do anymore. He was just ruining worlds, but I think he's ready. Well, let's talk a little bit more about how handsome he is. Yeah. I mean, you have, like, <laughs> oh, I would love to. Instagram <laughs> filter <laughs> eyes for Travis Dermott. <laughs> Do you think he'd be upset because he was on an NHL roster for a playoff run where it goes to game seven and then all of a sudden he's back in the AHL? Like, I'd be a little perturbed at that. No. Well, Jesse, I don't know about that because he literally, he took himself out of game seven because he realized he was too hurt to actually help his team. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of guy Travis Dermott is. Like, I think if he, if he was told this is for the betterment of the team, he'd be like, okay, whatever you want me to do, I'll go, I'll go to the growlers. Doesn't oh, so matter. he's Jesus. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, so, so um, you know, oh, and sorry, one more thing there. Can you, can you put this to bed? How much did he play on the right side this year? He played a fair amount. Like, okay. he really did. Was he um, effective? Just started, yes, he was. He, that, that's what's interesting here is that everyone's talking about, oh, you know, if, if let's say we have to restructure the whole blue line and Riley has to go to the right side, Dermot can do it. He proved it. And he, he didn't just play the right side in a sheltered role. Like he played right side getting the top, uh, the top of the opposition consistently. And he, and he succeeded. The Marlies were not like first overall in the entire, uh, in the entire HL almost the entire season. There was a little dip when uh, ever, basically everyone got called up or injured. But, um, yeah, he, he succeeded in that role. And I think, you know, maybe that's where that half season of AHL experience could come in for him, um, just kind of to acclimate himself to that position if that's something that the Leafs want to do full-time. But, um, no, yeah, he, he performed really well in that role. So here's the thing, okay, Calvin DeHaan has not yet signed with the Leafs. I hope that he does. But, but if... If would they work well together? Would you see? Can you see that? Oh my god! I'm just trying to make this happen. Okay? No, I'm kidding. Let's move on. Let's move on to something oh, I important. You were being no, come oh, on. Jordan Zuban. 
That's a guy that the Leafs signed yesterday, right-handed defenseman, played with Utica. Mm-hmm. What were your thoughts on him? What do you think about the signing? And people are calling it a reclamation project, as in he has some skills that legitimately could make him an NHL player, or do you disagree with that? I, I agree. Like he, that, that's a, that is a Kyle Dubas move, if there's ever been a Kyle Dubas move. Like he is... Uh, look what he's done with Justin Hall. Like that guy was on the ECHL scrappy. He he played like 65 games for the Indy Fuel of the ECHL, and then the next year he played for Rockford. Didn't really do too much. He was he was the rawest of raw talents. Totally, he was a former second round pick, and they were just willing to boot him out of the organization for the the Blackhawks. Dubas took him in, and now look, he, he signed a two year one way contract, and is likely going to you know challenge uh, Connor uh, yeah Connor Carrick for the right handed third pairing spot like he's and with Subban he's got the, the thing is he's got skill he's got um dynamic kind of capabilities like he's a guy who he'll rush the puck I actually like just playing in the GTHL as a kid uh even away from watching the Marlies and stuff like he played on the Marlies like triple a team mm-hmm. and I watched him play like consistently his games always seem to be after mine and he's the kind of player you stick around you force your dad to stick around in the ring to watch like he's he, he's a good guy and the Marley's developmental staff, like, I think I, I tweeted this when he got signed, but, like, if anyone can turn this guy around, it's them. Like, they, they the work that they did, like, they fixed Martin Marinson. Like, they fixed him. Like, he's not, he, he wasn't, there There was some gaps he made in the Calder Cup final, and, I'm, and, you know, that could be nerves, that could be situation. The stars were incredible, and they, and they found a way to neutralize the specific things the Marley's did, like no other team could. Mm-hmm. But, like, the development staff of the Marley's, you go to watch a practice with them. Like it's unbelievable the things they do. The, the just the attention to detail that they that they put in um, uh, player development. Guys like Scott Pellerin and Mike Dixon and guys like they're they're so focused on on the little things that make players um, that make players succeed. And a guy like Jordan Subban who can really like from and I've, I've talked around and from the things that I've heard his his gap control is completely off. Um, he just doesn't have great spatial awareness and he makes some really kind of boneheaded decisions because he's always been a skilled player and he's never really kind of had to think the game. He's kind of just kind of felt it. If you teach him how to think the game and that's something that can be taught, um, especially with these guys, you could have a potential just another, I wouldn't, I don't want to compare the two um, because I'm not quite sure how similar their games are, but they do like to rush. You could have another kind of like Justin Hall up and comer guy. They're around the same age as when Hall came in the organization. I'm, I'm excited for that, especially like you can put in really like, these reclamation projects, get them for dirt cheap and put them in the system and trust the, these development professionals to kind of mold them into guys who can knock on the door. Well, and if he plays at all in the NHL for you, you won. Yeah. Yes. You won. Like yeah, I, I, I want to say Nick Dowd was was the guy the Canucks traded him for, and I, and I get that yeah. Nick Dowd played in the NHL for them. But what I argued at the time that I will argue now is, while Subban's not much now, what he could be makes that a silly deal. And the fact that the Leafs get him for nothing and have this you know, kind of lottery ticket is, is very interesting. And I want to say he's younger now. Than Justin Hall was when the Marlies brought him on board. I don't know if that's it's around the same age. It's around the it's same around age. the same age. Yeah, so Subban's twenty four and Hall's twenty six right now. And Hall came in. This is his third year, so he might be even a year older. I'm not. You oh. don't quote me on that though. I don't want to get my mentions destroyed because I was wrong about <laughs> don't that. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> oh, that never happens. Mike so. Justin Hall is a guy that that definitely took a, a step forward this year. I'm mean, obviously we know he's a point of game player at the NHL level. Uh, but uh, Steve wasn't paying attention, so he missed that joke. Um, Sorry, I was. Uh, I said he's a point of game player at the NHL level. He's a goal game player at the NHL level. Goal goal game game player player at the NHL right. level. He but he scored mo- against the Islanders. Most, so it doesn't count. Most prolific goal scorer since Alexander Ovechkin. It's Justin Hall. Um, he's obviously he's now he's now on a one one way deal, mm-hmm. and he's you know yes it's league minimum, but it's for two years. Pretty hard to pass him through waivers at this point, I would think. Do you think that he's a guy that plays regularly next season? Is it a platoon role with Connor Carrick? Is he is he a step above Connor Carrick? Is he a Leaf next year? I think he's a Leaf next year. As to whether he's playing regularly, that's really up in the air because I think Hall and Carrick are two guys that Kyle Dubas really likes. Like he, they're they're both players that you can tell. Like once he got the reins, he's he made sure to lock them up. Um, and they both look. They're both good. Like I, I don't. Uh, Look, Polak gave 
a ton to this team. The fact that he came back from that uh, that terrible, terrible injury that just makes you cringe to this day. Um, in the playoffs, he came back to play meaningful games for the Leafs. Fantastic. Kudos to him. But Carrick is just a demonstrably better option at that role, um, in that spot, like mm. for sure. And Hall is as well. Um, what I'm hoping to see, at least, is that if the Leafs and I, then I know the schedule has been released, so I don't have the information right in front of me, but if they have a back-to-back kind of situation like they did last year, I sincerely hope that they use they utilize this time their their extras in that situation. So guys like Haynes, he has to take a night off, even though they're different handedness. Haynes, he plays on the right side, he has to take a night off. You put in Hall. They got to be smart. You put in Carrick. Yeah. They have. They really do. Yeah, you're right. And I remember you mentioned that a little while ago, Steve. Like, I, it doesn't make sense. And I think now. Um, the way, just the way that Dubis is running this, like he's very much an attention to detail kind of guy. And it was really cool watching him work, um, lot, you know, this year, uh, working the beat. I'm kind of, a bum, I'm kind of bummed that he's, uh, he's not going to be around cause he's just a really cool guy to observe. Um, but yeah, he, he's, I think he's going to have much more of a, of a pulse on that. Like he's, the, the Marlies were very like, even just an example, like they bought a second bus to make sure that everyone has enough room to sleep. You know, it's just little things like that that on the road um little things like that that i think are gonna that gave them an edge over you know when they're in these three and three stretches especially on the road and i think dubis is gonna be a guy who's like i signed these players for a reason don't run them into the ground and i think that's where hall's gonna um gonna step in i would say like set the over under on maybe like 40 games he plays Mm -hmm. depending on what happens because we've all that's not bad That's really good for a guy who you picked up uh, um for basically nothing, like uh, who is an ECHL guy who got booted out of his organization. Like that's phenomenal. And he's a testament to what the organization developmental staff that were put in place by Kyle Dubas, the guy who's running the lease now are able to accomplish. Now, what one guy you mentioned was, you know, they sort of fixed Martin Marinson. So I want to know exactly what you mean by that. So what people is, were... Is he an NHL player? Yeah. What people were concerned <laughs> with, with him, what, what we knew he did well, uh, prevented zone entries. What he did poorly. Everything else. Everything with the puck. <laughs> Handled the damn thing like a grenade. And then we see yeah. him score like a Datsuki in goal in game one of the Calder Cup final. But uh, what is Martin Marinson now? Um, Martin Marinson is, well, at this moment, he's one of the AHL's best defensemen. Um, whether that whether you take that as a good thing or a bad thing is kind of up to you. Just Jesse laughs. laughs. <laughs> Jesse laughs. <Yeah. laughs> exactly, because uh, and I would expect nothing less of Jesse, but um, <laughs> you know, that, I, love, I love the role of uh, Devil's Advocate he plays there. But uh, no, yeah, he's he, he's a, he's a really good. Like he, he's the he's the linchpin of I would say one of the, at least one of the linchpins of the Marlies blue line. Like he was, he, he started every game. He took the tough um, assignments, especially when, uh, when Dermot was called up. Um, he's someone who, yes, his, his ability to prevent zone entries is like ridiculous. Like I, I've never seen a player and I honestly think it's due to his hockey sense, but it's also the fact that his stick is insane. Like it's ridiculously long. Like it should be, it's like Chara and yeah, Marinson's like six, five, but Chara is like, you know, Shaq on skates and, mm-hmm. Like you know, I, I can't imagine it's legal, so I think that's part of it. But um, I think Marinson is what, what I noticed most about him is he wasn't he just looked more comfortable. Like Marinson always seemed like a guy, especially you know during the uh, during some of his rough stretches with the Leafs, like a guy who you got he got the puck on his stick and he just he looked like he was internally screaming, like Tim Murray internally screaming, <laughs> and you know, <laughs> and. uh and he was just, he would just freak out. And now you see, there was ease to it. He'd accept, he wouldn't accept it with like a flat stick and it would just hit it. And, you know, he would just stiffen up. He would accept it, kind of cradle it. And he was jumping into the play. You can see with that Datsuki and goal, there's a reason why he was in the crease. Like, because he, he jumped in sensing a chance. Um, you know, again, whether he plays in the NHL, it's really, it's up to Mike Babcock because at the end of the day, yeah, Dewis is the GM, Babcock's the coach. We've seen kind of his preferences for players and, does and he seemed like he kind of just gave up on Marinson, but I, I I think from what he has uh what he's proven through the Calder Cup and through um and through the HL season, he deserves a shot at least, at least in training camp. But then again there's so many options like Borgman and Rosen if you want to get to that as well. Like there's so many especially left side options. Well I was that, gonna uh, I was gonna go to Lilligren next. Oh yeah. But I mean I we, love I mean what well, well, let's topic. since you bring them up, Borgman Rosen. 
NHL players? Um, I don't know. So it's funny because I uh, I was talking to Scott Wheeler about this, and he he gave me a rough time a little bit because I I brought up uh, Rosen as a potential guy, and this was before he exploded in the playoffs. Um, and he's like, I just don't see anything. And at the time, I you know to be honest, I didn't see anything either. Uh, the 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 Rosen that you saw in the playoffs was not the Rosen of the first forty games of the season. He was like, so it, good. He was. He was so good. And it's funny. So I remember the game after Dermot got called up. Um, we were in a scrum with Keith and he was talking about how someone needs to step up now because Dermot got called up. They lost. Um, it was in, it was in a stretch. They lost six to seven. It was, um, for a first place team. That was a lot. Uh, it was crazy. And he was like, someone on the blue lines kind of got to step up. You know, when someone leaves, you got to assume those minutes. And, um, and then uh, like 20 games later, he's like, well, Rosen stepped up and he absolutely did. Like that guy showed he could move the puck. He wasn't, uh, he wasn't getting, we had this thing in the press, in the press box, Marley's bingo. And one of the bingo, um, I guess slots was, uh, an offensive blue line turnover by Rosen. Cause he would just wow. do that all the time. <laughs> he, yeah. Cause he, that guy. That's so dry. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, maybe I'm revealing state secrets of that. I don't know. Probably. So, uh, I, yeah. <laughs> but. Great. Great. But, uh, no, he's, he was, he would generated, he had the, he had the second most shots on the team as a defenseman. Um, one behind Chris Mueller who played 11 more games than him and he had four goals in the regular season. So he, he was just generating a ridiculous amount of shots, wasn't placing them properly, wasn't showing any patience. He just get the puck at the point, fire it on. It would hit someone's shin pads and there'd be a breakaway, you know, stuff like that. And he eventually learned patience. He eventually learned to open up and, and look for guys who are streaking the net, look for avenues. The HL is very much a, a league where, to defend in your own zone, they collapse in on the goalie. So there's pretty much no passing lanes, but he found a way to kind of move around, open up space and, and uh, to find someone. And in the playoffs, you saw, he just, he was feeling it. Like you can tell when the, when the Marlies are very much a team driven on confidence and all those guys had confidence and you don't see, you didn't, Callie Rosen didn't have the confidence to completely geek out like the entire team and go top shelf in the first round, uh, in the first 40 games than he did in the Calder cup final. Right. Like he's, it, he's really good. Yeah, the ridiculous two-goal game against Texas. Now, one thing Wheeler said uh, when he was in was, had Borgman not been injured, he might have been a healthy scratch anyway. Do you agree? I agree with that, yeah. Wow. Um, he just never looked comfortable. Like he, And he's a guy who, and look, all, all the power to him. He's, he's, I, I, I'm holding out hope that he's going to be a good contributor at whatever level he ends up at, but he did not seem happy to be in the AHL. Like He just didn't seem thrilled um he was sent down to become a penalty killer and that worked with Janssen it worked with Kapanen um you know that just the Marlies they gave him a ton of minutes and as a penalty killer he worked pretty well um in uh, every other area on the ice he just seemed uh it could have been excitations I'm not sure but he just didn't seem totally comfortable like he really Mm -hmm. didn't and I'm not sure what it was because it's maybe it was adjusting to maybe a different speed of the uh, the speed of the game he was used to kind of making really quick decisions and when he didn't have to make his quick decisions down there, he kind of panicked. But yeah, I, so that wasn't necessarily um, great for his outlook with the team. But at the same time, you never know what a summer uh, can do, especially a healthy summer, especially a confident summer coming in. Um, you really never know what it can do to a player. Uh, and he's a guy who, you know, he look, I mean, look at him. The guy's like the rock. Uh, yeah. He looks like a wide, professional right? wrestler. Hmm? Yeah, a hundred percent like cats and everything. Um, and uh, you never know if, if that guy can put it all together, he'd be he's intimidating because he showed he had speed in the, uh, speed and skill in the NHL. Like he was beating some guys out. He was, yeah, he was he sniping good. goals. Like I remember that. He did look so good. It, yeah. So it really depends. But at this moment, both of those guys to me, they're Rosen is definitely leapfrogged them. But at this moment, I think that there are guys like Marinson and um, you know, that have maybe a different shot or a better shot to get that third pairing left D spot. What was his playoff injury? Because I know he got completely rocked in one game and sometime, uh, sometimes AHL injuries aren't reported on that well. He, it, it looked like a concussion, um, but I don't know. I don't think he missed any time after that. And then all of a sudden he missed, like, I think it was close to two months. So it was, it was definitely lower body um, because, yeah, so he, de- he, he got jammed along the boards and no one really even noticed it in game one because it happened in game one against Utica. Uh, and then he he missed the he missed the next couple games and then 
I think it was, oh no, he missed, sorry, he didn't miss the next couple of games. He got jammed in game one, somehow played in game two, and then he got hit, and you could definitely tell, like, the second he went down, he didn't get up. That wasn't, like, curtains for him. Like, he was, he was gone. As to how serious it was to hold him out for the rest of the playoffs, that's where I'm a little skeptical. Um, I'm not 100% sure if he really was that injured to be held out um, or if the fact that they were just, the Marlies were like, w- what we have here is working. And we honestly, like, to be frank, don't really need you right now. Um, and they didn't. I mean, they won the cup. So yeah. <laughs> that's kind of the proof so, you need. So then now, now it's, I mean, everybody wants to know and everybody's going to want to know until he's in the league. He's, this is a guy that, you know, not since Nylander have we seen a Marley with more interest, I think, surrounding him. And it's Timothy Lilligren and, um, top pair next year, yes or no? <laughs> oh boy, this is, this is my favorite topic. I got to tell you. Okay, why is that? Because Wheeler said at least another season with the Marlies. I think he said. Two. I would say, uh, I I think it's another season. I wouldn't say I would I would refrain at least myself from the at least because look at the end of the day, like he didn't dominate, but he's 16 months younger than any other defenseman in the AHL. So he's not going to dominate. Like unless you know, unless he's not Eric you're Carlson. Abs- <laughs> Yeah, exactly. He, but he looked fantastic. He played top four minutes all year on the most skilled and deep blue line um, in the entire AHL as an 18-year-old. He, on most nights, because he got, when Dermot went up, he got paired with Andrew Nielsen, which, by the way, uh, all those Nielsen, Bracco, Brown in a second, like Nielsen getting thrown in there, I don't think anyone's going to take him right now because he is... He took a marked step back. Wow! Right here. But uh, I, yeah, I it, feel it, I, I have to admit something. By the way, I I may or may not have messaged Andrew Nielsen about that meme. Really? To, oh, really? See, to see if he knew about say? it. I, I just wanted you know? to see if he knew about it. I'm like, oh, did you see all the trade rumors? And he got kind of like, what, what, what? I was like, what are you talking Why about? I'm like, you do that to him. What did he, what did I, he didn't, say? I didn't actually, Steve. I wasn't like, hey, dude, you're getting traded. I'm like, have you seen the joke? And he had not. Did you say he seen the joke? Oh, he no? hadn't? I don't, here, let me go back. Okay, Steve, are you the kind of guy who like texts his friends we need to talk and then doesn't respond yeah. for like 15 minutes? <laughs> yeah. And Steve, are you I, blowing up Andrew Nielsen by oh, so saying that he responded you, to no, you? No, I'm, I'm blowing up Bobby Cappuccino. <laughs> I know, but <laughs> okay. wait. Oh. I, know. I don't know if you should I be talking about this. Completely marked on Leaf Twitter, <laughs> and I should not have done that. This is a whole separate <laughs> conversation. I know, I know. <laughs> um, but back to Timothy Lilligren Let's while Steve that. looks up this conversation. <laughs> Thank you, producer Jesse, <laughs> keeping the show on track, buddy. Um, Lilligren. I mean, you, 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 wait, what you said there is promising, right? Like you know, he, he led all. I think all defensive uh, rookies in, in points. Did he not? Uh, yes. Well, he, so he has, I believe he finished the season with the best points per game of any 18 year old defenseman in NHL history. <laughs> now that was like 0.33 points per game, but still that's mm-hmm. very impressive considering that point per game guys in the AHL are, you know, as Patrick O'Sullivan likes to say, a dime a dozen, um, <laughs> which is not true because it's very hard to do. Um, but no, he's, he's a, he's a phenomenal defenseman. Like he really had a, had a great year. He, he definitely wore down in the playoffs. That's one thing. And I think that's why um, a lot of people are maybe not as high on him as they were maybe mid season um, or, or after the world juniors. Cause he had a great world junior is that look, the guy had there's a reason why he went, he felt the Leafs at 17. The guy had mono. I mean, I had mono. It took me out of school for four months when I was in yeah. grade 11. Like it's a serious wow. thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a story for all the day, but um, no, it's 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 a serious sickness to guys, a serious illness. And the thing is, is it robs your body of any energy at all. Like, how are you supposed to train, build muscle, which he desperately needs to do, get faster, work on your shot, um, you know, things like that. When you just don't have any energy at all, and he comes in, plays against grown men, and earns a top four role, and uh, succeeds in that way, and ends up winning a Calder Cup as a regular contributor. So I think he's I think he's good. I think that especially the points that Wheeler made were valid in the sense that his skating stride is a lot more fluid than it is fast, um, which is I think something that might have been a misconception when he first came in is that we thought always oh, a speedster when really he's just a very smooth, very silky skater opposed to straight. It's like it's kind of like Marner in the sense that like Marner doesn't have a and I don't want to be comparing the two because whenever you make comparisons it's leads kind of down like no, a no one's gonna style. no one's gonna take you out of out of uh, context on is this Timothy one. Oh, no, right? a forward <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, people are not gonna clip that part it, totally but um no but it's it's very much like 
his straightaway speed might not be great, but that guy, the way he can move on his edges, the way he can transition. Um, now, I was I covered the rookie tournament. I was there for his first game, and um, it was maybe the worst game I've ever seen a defenseman play alive. Um, <laughs> it was horrible, and I think he would admit that as well. Like it was just it was it was terrible, and to see the strides that he made from that moment to even like a month into his Marley's tenure, it's, it's ridiculous. Like I, I think a lot of people are saying, Oh, his shot, Oh, his speed, whatever. That's his best attribute. I think the fact that he is one of the fastest learners as a player that I've ever seen is maybe his top attribute. Like you teach that guy something, he can pick it up right away. He, it took Callie Rose in 40 games to acclimate, uh, to acclimate to like the smaller North American sized ice. It took, it took an 18 year old who had, missed like half the year before with mono it took him like a month you know it was it was remarkable so i think that you give him a summer a healthy summer to add weight to get stronger you give him a year in top minutes on the marley's next year coming to training camps was it 2019 2020 uh, then then he's in the conversation at least whether or not he goes back to the ahl after that we'll see but i think that that's more up to him at that point Exactly. Yeah, I think I think he might follow the Dermot plan in that there's two or actually no Dermot Dermot didn't have two full years, but like he might follow the sense in like he plays a full year next year as like a top contributor. Maybe he's a little overripe by the end of it. He starts at the he starts at the start of the year. Maybe in January he gets a call up and he and he kind of solidifies himself. Nothing wrong with overripe. Um, so, dude, least contributor for the LeafsNation dot com. You write for fan sided. You're the Managing co-editor of Editor and Leaf, the Leafs just signed the biggest free agent there is. What has the last forty-eight, seventy-two hours been like for you? Uh, pandemonium. It's been ridiculous. <laughs> um, it's just like it's. This has never happened before. Like I, I, I'm 22 years old, and my entire time on this planet has been the Leafs being kind Bad. of like tied to tied, yeah tied to failure like really like that's it, it we've never and especially like and I, I was kind of talking about this today but i think that the fact that these hometown players like coming back it's always been sort of the aura of oh you know the fans have made it too hostile of a place to play the media has yeah you know there's a subsection of these fans that maybe aren't super friendly i mean just look what kind of jake gardner went through after game yeah, seven really. but but at the same time, there's a sense of whenever someone brought that up, you as a fan, you felt kind of responsible for that, even if you weren't, you know, you felt a little bit of shame for that. You felt some embarrassment and Tavares not only coming home, but leaving money on the table to do so, it just that it washes that all away. It shows that like the Leafs have gone, have transformed from like radioactive market to like attractive destination where guys who are apparently reportedly like guys who are seeking long-term deals, they're willing to come here short-term to win a cup. And that's nothing like I've ever experienced in my time watching this team from day one of my life, basically. And it's, it's been remarkable. Like it's been living, I don't, I don't know about you guys, but it's been like living on a cloud. You see the, the Babcock clip on primetime sports from 2015? Mark my words. Oh, yeah. They're coming. <laughs> oh, yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> hey, he Mike. called it. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, buddy. No, he called his he shot. Called he called it. Yeah, he yes. did. Yeah. Dude, you're 22. Do you vividly remember the Cujo years? I I remember them. Um, oh, I you said it high pitch. Come on. Oh God. I, uh, I just want to. Can I just? My bedtime. Guys, I, I have to interrupt. Uh oh. Hurricanes have agreed to terms with free agent defenseman Calvin DeHaan. <sighs> oh, thank God. No, no way. No. Four years. I'm so Four years. Four years. Eighteen point two million dollars. Oh so no. What's, what's the math on that? We didn't what's get them. 18 uh, plus four and a half. It's about four and a half. It is 4.55. Adam, Mike, and How are you going to sleep tonight, Adam? <sighs> Let us know. I'm so disappointed. <laughs> wow. Do, Mike, I, I don't know. Do we need to end it with Mike so we can like hug you or something? Or? <laughs> Jesse doesn't hug anyway, so he doesn't like human contact. The hurricane's got <laughs> another <laughs> effing defenseman. Yeah. No, I think this means Justin Falk is definitely on his way out, by the way. Just throwing that out there. Interesting. Hey, look at Brightside Wild over here. Yeah. That's awesome. On his way to, to Chicago. Toronto. Now he's probably going to Chicago. <laughs> uh, but hey, Mike Stevens, thank you so much for coming on, man. We are so impressed with your work. Keep it up. Uh, you've had an incredible year, just like the Marlies did, and uh, we're, we're going to be looking forward to seeing more and more of you, buddy. 
I, thank you so much for having me on. I can't, I can't wait to, you know, see what Tavares does as a leaf. Agreed. He is a Maple Leaf. Agreed, and you'll be covering it. So, but awesome. how does this affect <laughs> the Marlies? <laughs> take, care. <laughs> take care, Mike. All right, take care, guys. Have a good one. All right, we got to get to some other stuff here because I'm moving on from that Calvin DeHaan quick. I know we got a long show today, but it's our last one, so deal with it. Uh, now on to former Leafs here. JVR signs in Philly. We kind of knew this was coming. Five-year, $35 million contract. You know, it's funny. $7 million a year is what we expected, but we expected seven over seven. We expected a $49 million deal. The contract's not so bad. No. It's it's not so bad. Um, I, he's going to score. It's what you're paying him for. He's not the greatest defensively. All right, don't put him in that situation. Now it's, he's, he's a player that you need to... There's some coaching involved. Sure. And you use him for what he's supposed to be used for. My question is, uh, and everybody assumes this, as we all do, Wayne Simmons. Does that really push Wayne Simmons out the door? Or does it just mean Wayne Simmons plays with JVR next year and then is an unrestricted free I'm agent? I'm kind of leaning towards that. Like the flyer, You don't make that signing if you're like selling. And also, I, you know, people keep dumping on the Leafs and, and their defense. Their offense is what makes them special. In the same way, the Flyers, who's got a better one-two punch in terms of net front presence than JVR Simmons? Also, his contract is so good. Simmons? You're paying Uh-oh. him yeah. 3.9 to be Wayne Simmons. If it's ridiculous. Walks, if he walks, it's not really, it's not a total travesty. No, it's... Unless you're, unless unless you're out, out of, of the playoff picture... Then you yeah. trade deadline. Absolutely. Yeah. But, um, I mean, with a one-two punch like that, imagine you, you roll out your first power play unit, you got to deal with JVR, and then your reprieve is Wayne Simmons. Mm-hmm. That's awful. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Flyers, it's it's funny, uh, someone tweeted out the Leafs' top six, and I was like, wow, this is as good as any in the league. And then someone threw out the Flyers. Pretty damn good. Uh, Voracek and Giroux. I don't remember the exact lines. Yeah, Voracek, Giroux, Konechny, I think, is in there. Simmons, JVR, they're good. Couturier. Couturier, I totally forgot about. Extremely good. Um, And another team with pretty amazing center depth is the St. Louis Blues. And that is where... Sorry. We got... And we'll get to Ryan O'Reilly in a second, but their center depth is Shen, O'Reilly, Bozak. That ain't bad. In Bozak's years, you got a slight upgrade in, in, in contract, but three years at $15 million. Again, it, it, term is often what kills you. Yeah. And in both JVR and Bozak's case, yes, they got their money, but the term is not killer for the team. It's really good. It'll be fine. I, you know, looking through his numbers, I was amazed at how consistent he was, at least offensively, with the Leafs. And that's another player that requires you know some coaching and, and a little bit of sheltering. But the last couple of years as like a... Kind of a power play specialist, offensive zone And a zone third line center. Hey, can I just say Great. one thing? For everyone trying to trade Nazem Kadri, Tyler Bozak now makes more than Nazem Half Kadri. Half a million dollars. <laughs> so Good shut point. the hell up. <laughs> and also, Bozak's contract will be done, and Kadri will still have another year left, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Kadri's four years left, Bozak's three. And in the first two years, he scored 30 goals. Ridiculous. It's a really good deal. Well, oh, on yeah, the same he's day, <laughs> on the same day, and he's, he's like a, a five years younger. Yeah, he's <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's dees, he's dees. On the same day, the Leafs signed uh, Kadri for six years at four point five, mm-hmm. and Riley for six years at five. Mm-hmm. Those are two really, really good deals. Was that, were that that was a Lou thing too? I think it might have been so Lou. We'll, so we'll give Lou some credit on that one. Yeah, like okay, I don't like what he's done with the Islanders so far. It's but been like been a there month. three weeks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like give the guy a freaking breather. Well, yeah, let him, let him have a, no, a game. It's Steve. fair to <laughs> criticize what he did, and it's fair to like, criticize some of the stuff he did here too. To just sure. look at him, and, like everyone's just going, "He's an idiot. He doesn't know what he's doing." Okay, all right. Oh, I thought that's what you were doing. No, <laughs> dial it back, guys. <laughs> dial it back. Like he's not. Yeah, maybe the game has passed him by in some respects, and. I don't know. It you can't make fun of people who are like, well, you know, you got to give Mark Hunter, you know, his credit because you don't know what role he played. No, you if, don't give you don't give him credit for a role you don't know that he had. It's a shoot. Yeah, exactly. Mark <laughs> Hunter credit for signing Tavares? No, but in the same way, Somebody every tweeted good Lou move, every good Lou move was Dubis. Like you, you can't make those assumptions. You don't like know. those contracts happened under him. 
Um, I think. But yeah, Tyler Bozak totally sure. with the Blues looks especially good now that they have Ryan O'Reilly. And by the way, if you haven't read the Players' Tribune piece that Ka- Tyler Bozak wrote. Really good. So good. And the story about Phil Kessel, I don't want to ruin it, but it's so perfect. Yeah. It's so perfect. No, you Phil. should read the part about his dog. Do you want, do you want yeah, that? Yeah, just read the part about his dog. Okay, well, Jesse, you got it there, don't you? Uh, I'll pull it up. Pull it up. I'll pull it because up. Because it's great. Um, I I think the St. Louis Blues, it's so funny, when, when the Stasny trade happened at the trade deadline to Winnipeg, um, you could tell from the Blues players' quotes how upset they were. You know, we're still in this, and you know they're players. That's what they're supposed to do. For the second do. straight year. Yeah, and they're trading away a star player. But wow, does Doug Armstrong look brilliant now? Because he managed it. He managed his players' expectations. He managed the fans' expectations, ownership's expectations, and now look at them. Don't tell me the St. Louis Blues are not a playoff team next year and a huge threat in the West. Yeah, and Buffalo got better. They got significantly better in that they added NHL players. Well, to we're, not, we're not getting into that yet. No, but it's part of the deal. Well, I know, but, but we're not talking about O'Reilly yet because we got to get to. We're talking about Bozak, so we got to chill well, on O'Reilly. What What I'm saying is, I like the way the Blues are spending money. Ah, players look. Players cost money. The mm-hmm. Leafs are spending a lot of money up the middle. That's a great way to spend money. The Blues are spending a lot of money up the middle. What That's a great the, way to spend money. What did an old wise man once say? How does this affect the Leafs? You got to spend something to, to make something. You got to spend get something to get something. <laughs> and the That's Blues it holds true. <laughs> and did the Blues not get some? <laughs> exactly. I think they got some. No, no thing. I, they're spending, and that old man was you. But it, oh, I know. Okay. The Blues got, uh, I, I think they're spending a lot of money at the top of their lineup, mm-hmm. which is how teams are built yep. these days. And they're giving younger, cheaper players uh, the rest of the lineup. Robbie Fabry just signed a really nice deal. Yep. Nikita Soshnikov. Uh, Ivan Barbashev, I think, is going to get a chance. There's other guys. Like that's That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Like the one, God, I hope the Leafs keep Connor Brown. I really like that player. But this is a league where not a lot of fourth liners make, make two, two million, million bucks. bucks. Yeah. At least he's well, a penalty I mean, killer. I know that they could probably yeah. get something for Brown, Nielsen, Bracco in a second. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you're going to make that money, you better be able to contribute if someone gets injured. You better be able to play on special teams and you better be good five on five. And he is at very least all three of those things. This is from the. <clears throat> words of Tyler Bozak in the Players' Tribune. And the writer who helped him write it. Yes, because none of them actually write their own pieces. They have ghostwriters. Yeah, but shut up and believe in magic. <laughs> <laughs> he says, Phil and I had the same interests. A lot of nights you'd find us on the couch watching a game with Stella. Stella is a golden doodle. The, lo- the light of Phil's life. Aww. I got to know Stella after Phil asked me if I wanted to be roommates. It was a few years after I got to Toronto, and the way he did it was totally Phil. He just said, so you want to live together or something? Or, I wasn't going <laughs> to no, say no, no, no. <laughs> Do you want Phil impression? You so, so you want to live together or something? Or? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yep. I wasn't going to say no. He had a sick apartment downtown. It was a no-brainer. Some night, right next to a hot dog stand, apparently. Yep. Some nights I'd be in another room in our place, and I'd hear Phil's voice. No, no, I just didn't play well tonight. Yeah, I don't know, really. Can you do? Can you do that in full space? No, no, I, I just didn't really play well tonight. Yeah, I don't know, really. I'd walk into the room and he'd be mid conversation with Stella. I understood why. Sometimes I did the same thing. Stella was a good listener and a big hockey fan. And Who's that, not crying and right that now? Melted my heart and, and this morning. She was she was <laughs> on the couch with him when the Leafs lost to the Bruins in Game Seven. Yeah. I forgot that Bozak wasn't even playing yeah. in that and game. And he was their key center in that series. Yeah. He won all their face-offs. It was well, amazing. So it was, well, it was... Uh, let's, let's not get into it. It doesn't yeah, matter. Exactly. It doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's revisit it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, please, let's dissect that fucking game one more time. <laughs> <laughs> let's get oh on to the bigger God. blues news, which is Ryan O'Reilly. Yes. And I think instantaneously, when people see one star player in the NHL go one way and picks prospects players go the other way, they tend to go picks prospects players is the winner. And I think in this trade, yes, Buffalo did well, but I think the Blues are clearly, clearly, clearly the winners. Ryan O'Reilly is every day in his sleep a top 20 player in this league. Uh, Certainly a top 20 forward. And a manageable contract of $7.5 million. I don't know about player. I think he's a top 20 player. A lot of people really, really like him. I I like him too, and I I like that he's over 60% in the face-off dot. 
Sixty percent. Mm-hmm. He's making seven and a half, which is a chunk of change, but I think he's worth it. He might even be a discount. Now he, the he hits get, the open market. He's making more than that. Sabers get Berglund and Sabotka, who combined for twenty eight goals last year. Yeah, they needed to change the scenery. Berglund has scored more than twenty in the past. Sabotka, yep. not really. Um, and what's interesting is they didn't get the three guys that everybody wants from the Blues. If you're making a trade, which are Clem Clem Costin, uh, Jordan Cairo, and uh, Robert Thomas. They did very well in that regard. I know Blues fans were very uh, happy about that. But they did get Tage Thompson, and Tage oh Thompson was a first-round pick. 6'5". Six 6'5". Five. Six five, first-round pick in 2016. And it, it, his comments were interesting, and I'll read them out. He said, in St. Louis, they rely on their veteran guys. Of course, they're a good team. So I was pigeonholed in a sense that I didn't get to play a lot or get to play the game I like to play so I'm excited to come to a new team with some young players where I can just get out there have some fun make some mistakes and help the team win I think I play better when I'm relied upon a little bit more I really feel like I thrive under pressure so I'm excited to be the guy they look to in terms of producing and helping the team succeed so that sounds like a good fit yeah it's being a depth player is is an interesting thing like not everyone can do it even good players and we saw that with Thomas Placanitz yeah. Thomas Blacanet's fourth line center sucked. Until the Tom- playoffs. Thomas Blacanet's emergency second line center was actually really good. Yeah, he was. Um, yeah, it, in Buffalo, I think the Atlantic Division, Ottawa aside, um, got way better over the last week or two. Uh, Detroit got better. Not a great deal better, but they got better. Zadina looks so good. Have you seen all the development camp footage? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, he looks He's really insane. shot. Insane. Yeah, he looks really good. And Buffalo, is, I don't know if they're a playoff team, but they're definitely improved. And Florida is going to be knocking on the playoff door yet again. Uh, it's not a joke of a division. And Montreal, they still got some work to do, but I mean, there's a very good chance they'll be better as well. I looked at the deal and I was like, Buffalo's finally going to be good in two years. That's what I That's what I looked at. Well, they, have, they have three first-round draft picks next year. They're adding Dali. They do? Yeah. They have, here, I have it here. they have the Sharks, Blues, and their own next year. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Plus, all, if they get some goaltending, I feel like, not probably not this coming season, but the season after. After or maybe the season after that, they'll be, have a series. Are they team a season there. away from being a couple seasons they're away? A season o- they're two seasons <laughs> season away from being two seasons away. <laughs> Here's what favorite. I'm saying, and I like I like the direction the Sabers are headed. I gotta, the give, Doug, yes. teams? I gotta yes. give Doug. I gotta give Doug Armstrong credit because he traded a second rounder to the Sabers, but it's for 2021. The Sabers hang on to that pick. Second round players usually take two or three years to develop, mm-hmm. so you're looking at a player that seven years from now. Yeah. We'll, we'll be the guy that got for like Ryan Twenty twenty-five guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like literally, this guy's going to be a, in the mid twenties of this century. Mm-hmm. A guy that plays in the NHL. <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm just, Genius. I'm just looking at the uh, the uh, the Sabers first round picks because I I had no idea how they got the Sharks one. I guess it was in the Kane deal. It's a condition. This is from Cap Friendly. Conditional pick obtained February 26, 2018. Conditions. If the Sharks don't make the playoffs in 2019, good friggin' luck, uh, then the Sharks have the option to retain the 2019 first, and Buffalo receives a 2020 first round pick instead. Hmm. They already. Man, I tell you, Buffalo has improved their team, in my opinion. Losing O'Reilly hurts. Granted, but they've improved their team, I think, and they have three first round picks for next year. Mm-hmm. I can't hate yeah. that. And you know no, what? No, you can't. Bergevin has done very well. He's improved his team a little bit, and I, th- I think they'll be better in that Shea Weber's not going to miss three quarters of the season. Carey Price should bounce back a bit. He's added a couple guys, like the Armia deal was good, but it, he should be commended for how many freaking mm-hmm. draft picks that team had. Like, it, we. We yell and scream about Bergevin, but it's not like everything he's done has been dumb. I, I well, think there's been a lot of really smart decisions in the Atlantic Division recently, man. Um, well, let's talk was about it, Bergevin. Was that a little too backhanded, Jesse? <laughs> no, no, not everything he does is dumb. <laughs> well, here's here's the thing. I think Matthew Pekka is going to lead the league. In goals. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Montreal. Yeah, yeah. Here's what Montreal <laughs> did. They almost got Ryan O'Reilly. They all om- they got a great young player in uh, Kota- Kokaniemi. Kokaniemi. Ka- Kokaniemi. I yeah, think. Uh, and they almost got the Max Pacioretty sorted out. But they didn't. They didn't get Ryan O'Reilly, and they didn't get the Max Pacioretty situation sorted out, at least not yet. And you're they, trading a goal scorer, they which got, you need. They got Placanitz at $2.5 million. They got Xavier Willette out of Detroit for seven hundred grand. 
whatever. That's whatever. Matthew Pekka, who's played 20 games in the NHL, got a two-year deal for $2.6 million. 1.3 a year. Yes. 1.3 a year. That was total. Oh, yeah. I was about to have 20 games over. in the NHL, oh, though. 1.3 million, something you can bear. Uh, sure. To. Sure. And then, you and you then, lose them on waivers and wouldn't mean it. But then he comes out and says, well, we got to develop a center. Max Domi. Uh, Kotkaniemi. Who's going to play another year in Finland? You've had should. the team for six years. Develop the center yeah. six years ago. Come on. And here's the thing. And I got to give Eric a- Eric Engels credit because he did say, listen, at the draft, Mark Bergevin almost hit it out of the park. But the fucking key word there is almost. almost. Yeah, no one cares. Okay, so, but when he was asked about centers remember. on the market, he said signing any of them for five or six years and potentially blocking the future graduation of one or two centers they drafted in Dallas wasn't something he was willing to do. Mark, you don't have any centers. <laughs> Who's going to block your centers? Gary you Price one, is 30. <laughs> if you have one center, if you've gone out and given Paul Stasny six years... Paul Stasny is still the only center you have. Yeah, they, you know, Brian Burke repeatedly said, uh, you know, no, nobody makes more mistakes than on July 1st or whatever it is, no, mm-hmm. whatever. They should have made a mistake with Paul Stasny, you know? They should have given whatever. Way overpaid. And here's the thing, and, and as Bergevin was uh, walking at a press conference, space. he told one reporter the price to acquire Buffalo Sabres center Ryan O'Reilly via trade was too exorbitant for him to pay. <laughs> It must have been a very competitive market. Sure, and as the I'm Blues sure ended the up division, getting them, they got a hell yeah. of a package. Yeah, Blues ended up getting them, and it was a hell of a package. Um, although the Blues end up saving cap space in that deal, which is bananas. Um, but the the Canadians wanted them. I think Lou wanted them as well uh, in the island. Well, it was going to be a three way trade. Had those those two draft picks. For the Islanders not fallen. Oh, that's right. It would have been Islanders, mm. Buffalo, and uh, Montreal that made a trade. And I don't know how it would have looked, but I think Montreal would have ended up with Ryan O'Reilly. But after the draft, yeah. I got to think you're going... At the draft, you're like, well, we're probably going to keep Tavares. Once yeah. you know you don't have him, you're like, uh, I want him all to myself. And yeah. then you don't even get him then. Well, and here's the last quote that I want to put. He, he, Mark Bergevin said, I think our fans want to win, but there are also fans that appreciate when effort is given every night. That's oh what they're going God, to get this Mark. year. That's for sure. And that usually brings good results. And Eric Angles ends the piece with, effort will be there, but the results will probably take time. Yeah. Again with the effort shit. It's again, it's the same crap. It's the same garbage. Yeah, Mark, Habs, Habs where Canucks, are you? Habs Canucks Stanley Cup final. The, the all effort the all cup. Effort. And let's get to Vancouver. Dude. Jay Beagle, 32 years old. Four years, $12 million. Man, the worst contracts signed that uh, that day were all four years, $3 million per. Leo, Antoine Rousseau. Leo, God love him. Jay but. Beagle. And Jay, Antoine Rousseau at least is 28 years old, so probably will play out this deal. You get to tell me, like, and Jay of Beagle, course. Antoine Rousseau got the, got the exact same amount of money, by the way. Four years, $12 million. You're going to tell me that you needed to lock up Jay Beagle till he's... 36? That's an overpayment. He has 51 goals in his entire career. Mm-hmm. It's only $3 million. Oh, man. Then you, okay, For so you've got line Beagle, set. Rousseau, Schaller. So they're paying $7.9 million for three players who counted for 24 goals last yeah. year, guys. If, if Beagle's your third line center, it's not too bad. $3 million oh. for your third line center, that's okay. But you signed that guy to a one year contract, even if you got to pay him four. Yeah. You know, I'm just I'm looking at the Canucks cap situation. It's not it, bad. It's no, it's not the worst. They're gonna like, regret these signings, guys. Come on, come on. Four years, maybe, maybe. Dude, Jay, dude, who do they Jay gotta Beagle? lock up? Jay Pat Beagle. Pedersen's not on the team yet. Yeah. They gotta lock up Besser. That's gonna hurt. But in terms nah. of like, what things are they? that are gonna gonna be a detriment to them going forward? They don't have any crazy contracts. Now, that's the issue, though, is they don't have any players that are going to be yeah. worth signing to a lot of money. Guys. They're just not a great team. It's just, it's a nothing move for a middling team. Like, I'm not passionate about it. It's not crazy overpayment. It's decent for a third-line center. It's, uh, whatever. It's not but even he's that. Not it's, a it's just your team's not center. better. Your he, team's not better. Yeah. No, and he's it's not just, a third-line center. It's an even move. Jay though. Beagle's a fourth-line guy. But it's an even move. You still have $12 million in cap space, and you're not going. They're not looking to compete. They're not looking to completely tear it down. They're kind of just that. So when, yeah. when Besser's up okay. in a year, and then Pedersen's up in three. You'll have, you still have the cap space right now if you had to do it. 
Really? I if, don't know, if man. If you lack I think skill, they're... you might as well be dicks, and the Canucks will definitely be that. Yeah. At I think very be, least, I think you'll find a way to You win. can walk around in yeah. your sleep. I'm trying to be devil's advocate here because no one's like, yeah, they did great. Guys, <laughs> they, they had a terrible... Look, look at this, okay. Vertan is a restricted free agent. How the hell is that going to go? All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read Sorry. you a tweet, okay? And this is a I really good one. I love tweets. Justin McElroy, who works for uh, CBC Vancouver, he said, This Tavares news is exciting, but did you know that the Canucks will be paying Antoine Rousseau, Jay Beagle, Louis Erickson, Brandon Sutter, and Eric Branson a combined $20.6 million in 2021 when there will be an average of 33 years old? Who, is, who are, name the guys again? Antoine Rousseau, Jay Beagle, Louis Erickson, Brandon Sutter, Eric Branson, $20.6 million three years from now, guys. It's a bad deal. Both of them. Ooh. It's Could bad. Branson only make he's 26. He only makes 4 million. Eh, I'm okay. That's a terrible deal. Come on. The, uh, oh, that's, that's terrible. The, that's deal. Deal. Well, the, the reason okay they signed on. Beagle, they said, was so they could get Brandon Sutter some more offensive zone starts. It's Tanev's just, a sick deal. But, like, they're, yeah. they're an even team. Like, what do you want them to do? Do you want them nothing. to... Nothing. Just don't do anything. That, no, that I want is them to a nothing move. move. That, I want that to, is a nothing move. Why these spend guys, the money then? These guys, because you need to, you need to feel the team, and you need to be. They're trying to be competitive any way they can, and this is how they're trying oh. to do it. And I don't, I'm no. not like guys. This it's is not terrible. terrible. It's just kind of even. It's, they haven't, they haven't gotten better. They haven't gotten worse. They're still kind of. Bo- they're why are you spending twenty four million? Because you need to spend money. You don't. You, you don't. Yeah. And but you don't. There's a, there's Here's a floor. how you spend your money. You take on a bad contract. You mm-hmm. call the Winnipeg Jets and go, you want to sign Paul Stasny? What can we do to help you? Okay. To Jesse's point, if they don't make these signings, they're going to be even worse. To your point, they could have gotten more creative. This is not how you spend this money. Mm, this isn't. It's not creative. There's no... I'm just... I'm looking at them and I'm, and I'm going, how do you become good? What's the plan? Mm-hmm. What's the plan to become good? You got Pedersen, great. You got Besser, great. Mm-hmm. You, know, you got a good draft pick. It's not like Horvath's old. Who, who, who did they draft? Mm-hmm. Who did they draft? It was... Uh, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, anyway. Doesn't matter. He's not going to be there for a bit. Um, I just... I, what's the... And here come the Vancouver Canucks plan. What's the track for that? But also... Oh, I, I'm a, with Jesse in that they couldn't do anything. It's a bottom do five nothing. team that's still going to be in the bottom five next year. And Jay Beagle, signing Jay Beagle for $3 yeah. million dollars but, doesn't change anything. But do you not call Edmonton and go, hey, listen, I know you're trying to move Milan Lucic. He's from Vancouver. We'll take his salary on, but you got to give us something in return. I just, I just don't think every deal is that. I just don't think every deal is, hey, here's our creative way to get better. I just don't think there's enough of that in... Just in the NHL, but in the general. Canucks, and there's the and ownership. This is, guys act, like, yeah. this is also remember that this you have is to sign players. This is the same Canucks team that has no no imagination on anything. What imagination has Jim Benning shown, or Trevor Linden, or the ownership group, whoever's driving this? They they've never gotten creative about any of it. It'd be one thing if it's like, well, they, that deal didn't exist. Well, fine, but it has existed, and they've never done it. Uh, you know, I'm looking at oh boy. I don't know. Guys, I'm looking at some of the young guys they have, and they might strike gold. They have you, Levy. I it, about them. Uh, yes. Uh, all I know is this. Thatcher Demko better be really good. <laughs> better be really good. If he is, uh, maybe you got a chance. There's a, there's a nice little core there. Mm. No. No. In Di Pietro, in Ulevi, in Mott, in They, they got in hope Besser, in that. They got hope in, in that for Horvat. sure. In it's not know. totally hopeless. In it's just canon. I look at I look at like the next two three years and I go, what are you? Yeah, you know what I mean. That's a, dude. That's a long time to planedly suck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. Some you teams take are, on some bad teams deals. Are, I don't think they think the team they've made is bad though. Is the only thing <laughs> that's the uh, that's <laughs> we, ah! we, don't, we don't know that. Eh, I'm pretty sure they think this is a decent team. We'll see. That's the problem. We'll Guys, I haven't, I, haven't read, I haven't read any quotes from betting recently. I don't remember last time I checked in. Well, I we ran anything on the this show. This is the, like, the, the, the thing that the quote that I read is they signed Jay Beagle so Brandon Sutter could get more offensive zone starts. Fine. You paid okay, that's $3 million a season 
So uh, Brandon Sutter can get more offensive zone starts. What my one thing with Beagle is he's he's had a pretty good go. He's had a pretty sweet go. Like he's been playing behind Backstrom mm-hmm. and uh, Kuznetsov. And I don't remember who the third line center was on Washington. Um, he's he's Vancouver doesn't have that. I don't, I don't know, man. We should they move on from this conversation, that. but I just want to end it on this. How many cups does Matthews Marner? And Tavares have combined. <laughs> How many Zero. does Jay Beagle have? Wow. That's you know, good 69. <laughs> he doesn't, but. <laughs> the answer is one. I mean, he does. Zero. That's true. And he contributed 51 goals Winning over nine culture. years. Winning culture. Brooks Orpik's still available. Hey, at and least he's got a try hard. Okay. Mm-hmm. What's, just, what's next? Just, oh my God. What's next? <laughs> The Canucks are the least imaginative team in the league. They had a terrible July 1st. Book it. And they are, by the way, going to buy Jay Beagle out eventually. Book that too. Wow. You think? No, I don't know if he's going to be that bad. I just Guys, think the Leafs need Calvin DeHaan. He Dehaan. makes more money than Matt Martin. But why don't the yeah, Leafs buy Calvin objecti- DeHaan? He's objectively a worse player. Ryan Reeves. No, he's not. What I, always, not said about, what I always said about Matt Martin is like... Uh, no JB if, if you're going to be right? a depth player, you better <laughs> be able well. to kill penalties or something. You better be able to contribute something, and he couldn't do that. Beagle can do that. He can at very least do that. I just think he's <laughs> making too much money to do it. What's next? Uh, we've got Jumbo Joe resigning in San Jose for $5 million to nobody's surprise. He is. $5 million, though, and he's had both knees reconstructed. I know it's a one-year deal. Oof. It's worth the risk. Yep. Uh, they they also re-signed Logan Couture, which was a great deal. My my thing with San Jose, and and that was where it, what gave me pause with Tavares going to San Jose, which would not have been surprising, I guess, because you know they were considered the front runner. That core is getting old. They're getting up there. Well, try telling them that they just tried to get John Tavares for thirty million dollars. And you know what? They're going to be a great team this year. Yeah. But my question still remains: How long? And I think they got they got a few years left. Yeah. Uh, they they got a few years left. Unless there's a crazy injury, I don't think they're going to get bad overnight. Martin Jones isn't old. Um, the Sharks are another team that spend a great deal of money on a few players and consistently replace them. Look at what the Sharks have done in the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round over the last 10 years or so. They've been doing very well. And, and, you know, sometimes it's just a regular NHL player. Sometimes it's a, you know, player who's sort of in the middle of your lineup. Justin Braun, I think, was like a sixth round pick or something like that for the Sharks. Joe Pavelski Mm -hmm. was a seventh. Mm -hmm. They're they're a team that spends the money when they know they got something good Mm -hmm. and And they constantly replenish. Constantly replenish. So if any team has earned the right to go for it, I think it's them. Because they've been doing things properly for a very long time, and it's a shame that they haven't been rewarded with a cup. Jack Johnson signs with the Pittsburgh Penguins. <sighs> and the best thing ever. <laughs> and How did it take us this long? Because <laughs> there's a lot me, that happened. It's after laugh. 10 o'clock. Well, yeah, that, this, this show's going to be three hours. This will be the longest yeah. show we've ever done, but that's okay. No, we have a show titled The Longest Show We've Ever Done, so we can't actually top it because that show is literally the longest show we've ever done. We have to cut this off and upload it. That. <laughs> we have to upload it in like two parts, even if the second part is only like most, seven minutes. What about the mostest longest show we've ever done? Ooh. What about two most pecked? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jack Johnson signs a five-year deal in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Pittsburgh fans are not overly thrilled about it, rightfully so. Yeah. Uh, but they what be. Jack Johnson said at the press conference was, I've been really wanting to be a part of a winning culture <laughs> in a place where the expectations to win are as oh high God. as can be, and there's a chance to win. That comment... And John Tortorella took it the right way. John Tortorella <laughs> was, a very, was very measured in his response because why was John Tortorella in front of the media anyway? That's what I couldn't figure out. <laughs> what day? The oh, like the Riley what, Nash signing. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. What is he doing? It was the, the Riley Nash <laughs> signing happened, I think, after this. So I find it, I was like, what was he doing talking to people? But I just, I, I picture someone's phone ringing like, like a howler just arrived from Harry Potter. Yes. Just a red envelope. What do you mean a winning culture? <laughs> Jack Johnson, you piece of crap! And they're just 
Anyway, well, Jim and then Rutherford, it evaporates. Jim Rutherford. Then this is where I think Torts really lost it. Mm-hmm. I think he would have kept the Jack Johnson stuff to himself if Jim Rutherford had not said this. This is this is going to be great for the Penn's Cap or Ken, Penn's Columbus rivalry. I can't wait. He said, "I don't think Jack had a bad year. He was a healthy scratch at the end of the season. I know the reason why, and it wasn't because of how he was playing." <laughs> that is a, that's a direct shot at the coach. You're you're directly questioning uh-huh. the coach's so decision. John Tortorella has left the Calgary Flames dressing room, <laughs> <laughs> and he's now on, he's now in Pittsburgh. He's on a plane yeah. over. <laughs> he's getting held back. Someone's grabbing his dress shirt, awkwardly fumbling him into the. And t- <laughs> shout out to Aaron Portsline from uh, Portsline from the Athletic. Because wow, is he, he he's so great. He's and so, so great. So much news happened that like that that should be huge. And I feel like it didn't really take off. You know what it was? We didn't have the audio. Mm. I wish we did. Yeah. Aaron should have put that out. Yeah. But so here's if that's in front I of a podium, I 100 percent agree because I looked for it on that day so I can make like a never put it little Instagram video about it. And there was no, it was just words, and it was too many words, so it wouldn't fit it's for anything to carry. And it frustrated me. It's, yeah. it's an all time Tortorella quote, and we're never going to see it in yeah. all the top tens or whatever. Could we not have we that audio it. released though? He could release that audio if he if wanted it to. Nah. It has to exist. He had to have recorded sure. it. Yeah, that's not really how it works. Anyway, I feel like Yarmo. Kekalainen keeps John Tortorella on a leash like hey like like a like a bull like a raging Absolutely bull we know you're not. a raging bull you <laughs> but he's calling oh. Tortorella and going no nope. no no but no, I think not. on this one he was like go on let him go let him have let it let him go so here here's you, what he this said. is so uh, blue jackets fans let me know but this has to endear him to you so much. Absolutely. The coach of the Blue Jackets ripping into the Penguins? Hell yeah. How Hell many? yeah. Can we get to the quote, though? How many Blue quote. Jackets fans do we have listening to the show? At least one. It's got to be like a dozen. There's a couple who were upset at me a couple years ago for something I said, so I know I, that I they exist. Hopefully they still stick around. That yeah. was a couple years ago. I can think of at least two, All actually. Right. Yeah. All right. All right. One works at the Hockey Hall of Fame. So here's what Tort said. What? We wish him the best. But for him to put it the way he put it is expletive. Expletive. I think he said shit. <laughs> and to have a general manager question our decision making from three hours away, he must be a blank musician. M- m- magician. That's right. <laughs> Can you read it? Whiffs the swearing. All right. We wish him the best, but for him to put it that way is shit. Thank you. And as and to have a general manager <laughs> question our decision making from three hours away, he must be a fucking magician. <laughs> now I don't know that that's what he says. He might be a shit magician. <laughs> but I'm assuming that's what he says. And then he, he but you got to do it like I wish I knew how to do a Tortorella impression because he just he does it in this way where his belt is the, is the person holding him back from starting a fight where he's just grabbing his belt and like no for him to say that that's shit. Oh God! Why? Why don't we have video of this? It's a sin! It is a sin! Johnson's personal and financial issues have played out in the public eye for years, and Tortorella said, and this is I'm reading from the uh, Sportsnet article. Uh, Tortorella said the organization both sympathizes with what Johnson went through and has quote bent over backwards to help him out. Here's where we get back to the quote. That's what pisses me off. He doesn't have enough, I think, balls to call me back because I've tried to get in touch with him. You don't. Uh, you don't. Shit on an organization that's done nothing but try to help you. We all know Jack has had some problems along the way here. It's very well chronicled. And all we've done is try to fucking help him. (laughs) I love... And then he goes on. I love the fucking guy. I had him on the Olympic team. I get him on the World Cup team. I love the guy. But for him to do this is ridiculous. He's got uh, he's got to start pointing the finger at himself, not other people. Uh, if I'm a former teammate of his and I play against him next year, my gosh. Man, if this is in January... By the when- way, all uh, let me just say this. All of the expletives that I said there are alleged. I'm assuming they're the ones that fit. I haven't actually seen the actual article. With there it. is the actual one somewhere. Okay, well, anyway. Sorry, right, if Jesse. This is, not Jen. If this is in November... And the season's like kind of in full swing. Oh, and, we're getting, and he's on camera saying this. It's the number one story. He, may, he might lose his job. No. no. It's so no. aggressive. This is so, so aggressive. No, this is read, different. Read the first two lines of that. 
Wait. He calls him a fucking shit magician. <laughs> no, he just calls him a, a magician. No, 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 a fucking no, no, magician. No, no, no. <laughs> That's a grown Boy, ass a man. Shit you know magician. how bad I wish I could make that the title on Sportsnet.ca. Shit the magician. The Steve Dangle Podcast, July just, 3rd, 2018. Shit magician. <laughs> I just so don't think people realize how crazy this quote is. And it blows my mind. Um, it's so. not... Listen, so, he got fired because he tried to fight somebody. <laughs> you can, you can. Those are fighting words. Oh, they're, they're fighting words, and those that's fine. So, that's fine in hockey. Now, I feel a little bit bad. I'm not. We're not done with the quote. Oh, okay, okay. This is why I keep trying to jump in here. Oh, my bad. Um, this is just so juicy. Jack Johnson said to Aaron Portsline, "When I first came to Columbus, I was looking forward to helping create a winning culture." Help build it. I had a wonderful time in Columbus. I met my wife there, started my family there. Nothing but great friends and relationships there. I believe they have a winning culture there. All I meant was, I'm excited to be a part of Pittsburgh's winning culture. It came down to me making a hockey decision. I have no animosity and nothing bad to say, and I didn't mean any parting shots whatsoever. Back to Rutherford, though. Mm-hmm. The GM's mm-hmm. comments really riled up Tortorella. The thing that pisses me off the most is a general manager in this league questioning uh, and talking about our decision making. Shut the fuck up. Jack and I had an open, honest conversation all through this. Jack and I have known, known, known one another forever, and I love the guy. There's no agenda here. You think uh, scratching Jack Johnson was an easy decision for me <laughs> after what Jack Johnson has been through, uh, after what Jack Johnson has been in this league and what he is? Uh, but that I can't... Uh, sorry, but that can't get in my way as far as making the right decisions for the hockey club, and that's what we all we do, that sorry that's what we all do. So Rutherford should shut the fuck up. I don't <laughs> like it. Doesn't end. I don't want to go into name calling because I know Jimmy. I don't want to go to after all of that. He says <laughs> I don't want to go to name calling. He's a good man. After he told the man to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Come well, he on. Didn't, he didn't name call him. He said they're both good people. But what the fuck are they doing? Get on with your business. I hope jo- I hope Johnson plays his ass off for him, but stay the fuck out of our business when you don't know what's going on. They play each other November 24th. Remember those remember those <laughs> That's old unbelievable. like Remember those old like texty phones like where you could only text from them and you you the flip ones? Them? Yeah. That's what Torch should have. Like a sidekick? Yeah, yeah! sidekick. <laughs> Torch should have a sidekick. A You're side not allowed kick. to make any phone calls. You're just not allowed. <laughs> Uh, because if he types this, he has a chance to go, mm, backspace, uh, backspace a little bit. Should I tell the GM of the Pittsburgh Penguins and their new signee to shut the fuck, <laughs> fuck up? He told Jim Rutherford like, to shut the fuck up. And they, have, and they shored Jim. up their center. They had a legitimately good signing with Riley Nash. Man, when Masai Ujiri got up on that stage and said, fuck Brooklyn, and said, fuck Brooklyn that is the best money he's ever spent. 25 G's, sure. No problem. Here you go. If you're Yarmo Kekalainen, <laughs> you're sending a little winky emoji to John Tortorella's phone. You're, you're, you're not even close to firing him for that. You're happy he did it, I think. <laughs> I think he should be happy he did it because who is not looking forward to who wasn't looking forward to Pittsburgh Columbus in the first place? But who's not watching that game? I think he got the a call from game. Gary Bettman. No. I think Tortorella got a call from Gary Bettman saying, hey, calm down a little. Wait, how does Yarmo answer the phone? I know. <laughs> like, like not even, hello, yeah, on it. Yeah, talk to him. No, he didn't have to talk to him. He was probably like, it's like when you, you know, in the old, in the 80s when they tapped the fighter on the shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> go out there. <laughs> Get on out there, Johnny. Yeah. Let's go. Go defend our honor. Oh, you and you know what? The 80s? You mean last season with Matt Martin? Ah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Sheriff Martin. <laughs> Patrolling the line. I, I just. Whatever that was. <laughs> yeah. I, you went with it. I was, I was going to try to Thank you. Appreciate up, that. <laughs> appreciate the support, guys. I <laughs> Good try. Good I try. Do. No, I, I think. I think. Uh, I feel a little bit bad for Jack Johnson because his <laughs> comment was. Not that bad and probably misconstrued. And I, I think wonder so. I wonder if Torts read that and went, oh, okay, I bet what he meant was Because he know, knows him. I mean, obviously Pittsburgh just won back to back cups, that's what he's referring to. But then he read what Rutherford said after and he goes, What? You son of a and then he sent the howler. Yeah. And especially after Columbus was up to nothing and mm-hmm. a fluky overtime goal in that third game. Tim McAuliffe keeps bringing it up on Tim and Sid. Fluky overtime goal. 
Caps win the cup. <laughs> Literally. It's like, his favorite thing because it's so true. It's 100% if a if a puck doesn't bounce off a guy's skate, the Caps probably don't win the Stanley Cup. And, and probably get swept. In the round. Probably get <laughs> swept in the first round. Ugh. And completely torpedo their team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you think they're just losing Barry Trotz? No. Mm mm. Mm mm. There's going to be more Ovechkin to the KHL articles. <laughs> nope. Won the cup. <laughs> so who's, who's Washington's head coach anymore? That, uh, uh that Reardon? Yeah. Uh, was, was he hired? Reardon? Yeah, they hired him. I yeah, think yeah. so. A, uh, assistant coach? Was he assistant? Y- yeah. I don't know. Hmm. Ah. I, I genuinely don't. Ah. Know. There's, there's too much going on. Uh, I want to do a quick shout out to Edmonton. Why? Well, I mean, listen, they did not have a spectacular day, but I think get it bringing in Brodziak is not the worst thing in the world, considering the guy is a positive face-off guy and a penalty killer, and they have the least worst, world's worst penalty kill ever. He's been the assistant coach since 2014. Oh, so there you go. Promoted. And then bringing in uh, Reader. Who had a bad year in LA? Bring him in on a one-year deal. The guy's super fast. If you can keep up with Connor McDavid, you probably can get twenty goals. Wasn't he an Oilers draft pick? He might have been. I thought he was. No, and that's a good player and a player that apparently the Leafs had interest in and uh, a lot of people wanted. No, Edmonton had a fine day. Yeah, I was like, okay, okay, All right. I still feel like they need to find. If I'm again, if I'm Vancouver, I'm like, how can we help you with Lucic and it gets us a first round pick. The Oilers, they're interesting because wasn't there something coming out about uh, ownership was looking to cut costs or something like that with the Oilers? Like, do they have an internal cap? I don't think so. They better not. No, that, something came out where um, Daryl Cates is looking to do more develop in, development in Edmonton, and naturally he wants Edmonton to pay for it. Because oh. <laughs> <So. laughs> I was going to say, that little area they're doing there, they're making crazy money on that because of all the real estate. So why I don't would know that be... the city of Edmonton is, though. No, he is. Yes. I, that's, that's what I'm saying. The so, city so. of Edmonton can't play ball this time. <laughs> no. what, what are they, let yeah, me no. guess, Seattle? Yeah. Like, he's not... No. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, Apparently there's some sort of... De- I didn't read into it too much because, okay. frankly... It's Daryl Cates pulling a business move that anybody would do. Hey, it worked once. I'll try it again. Yeah. Um, but he wants the city of Edmonton's, quote, participation in this, uh, which I can't imagine in a conservative province like Alberta he's going to get. I just can't see taxpayers going, sure, we'll fund something else for this rich man. I can't see it. So uh, that's that's what I'm hearing. If they're talking about cutting costs, well, I don't know. Best, best tweets I have seen from Edmonton Oilers fans, though, are, who'd you rather have? Matthews Tavares or Drysaddle McDavid? I'm taking Drysaddle McDavid all day. And okay. people, and then the response is, what about the rest of the team? You know what I found out? and the rest of them. You know what I found out over the, uh, you know, since John Tavares has been signed to the Toronto Maple Leafs, uh, fans of other teams have taught me that there's only two lines. <laughs> I learned that. There's only two players. Yeah, there's only two players. There's only two positions. That's it. Two centers, two. and that's it. No goalies. Nope. Stop moving the goalposts. No posts. coaches. Yeah. All and, if, and if you do, you know Tavares is sniping on him anyway. <laughs> Boys, the Leafs are good. I'm sorry. Get used to it. Ah, yeah. but what about Malkin Crosby? No. Only two positions. They yeah. just play two on two. Cubs. That's how hockey oh, works. They got Broussard, though. So uh, I take Broussard, Malkin Crosby over yeah. Padre, Matthew. Because it's hard to be a Flyers, Flyers, Flyers fan. Three on three sport. Like, do they just go Cups and that's it? And that's the end of the discussion? Yeah. Is this what it's like? Uh, you know what? Now that the Leafs have turned heel... <laughs> Do we need to become friends with the other heel teams in the league? Ooh. Are the Leafs now friends with the Flyers? Yeah, I guess we can't be fr- friends with the Oilers anymore no, they because they didn't keep up. We haven't won anything yet. So Are we're the- kind of we're kind of like friends with Tampa. You know? See Tampa But they won. No, Tampa, better. see Tampa's heel. Yeah? Tampa's heel. Well, because they're amazing. Because they're yeah, they're too good to be face <laughs> and they were the favorites against Washington. And Washington, after being heel last year, yeah. face turn, they win the cup and everyone's happy for them. They were heel last year. They were think? heel last year and they and had then, a face turn <coughs> okay. with the whole we're not going to be sucked this year. So, and now they're face. So Randy Orton 
was he was the heel last year as the Capitals, and then this year they put him against Triple H, and everyone's like, "Ah, oh, and you Triple H, you're married to Stephanie McMahon." And then Randy <laughs> Orton comes out, and he, and then he's like, "I'm gonna take down Triple H," and Randy Orton comes out as the babyface now, and, and that's the Capitals, Brady and, they, Holby. Whoa. and they take down the the heel Triple H uh, Lightning. Braden Holtby was RKO out of nowhere mm-hmm. with the back-to-back shoutouts, game six and seven. Mm-hmm. The, That's good, yeah. But the RKO, Leafs, yeah. the Leafs were face. <laughs> they were the adorable shitty team. Then they were the adorable kids, and they sort of kept that. They were the they were the fun team. Heel. Ooh. Now they're heel. Now everyone's booing John Cena all of a sudden. The Islanders <laughs> are sort of like uh, Bailey. And that they're the face that was just betrayed, right? So they're they're looking a little weak now, but so they got to find out like how do they get it back? Is it is it a big come from behind win or do they turn mm. heel? There's a lot of wrestling being applied here, but the yeah, Leafs are yeah. heel, and they need to now align themselves with, other, with other heel teams. I think I think Arizona is Rey Mysterio, <laughs> in that they're just, hey, look, it's cute little Rey Mysterio. He's never going to actually win anything. The Brooklyn Brawler. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Who are the other heel teams in the NHL? Well, I mean, you got to, th- I don't know why, people, the Sharks are extremely likable, even though they're always good. But I think it's because they've had so many heartbreakers, and people can really feel for them. nobody really believes, yeah. Yeah, even though they really should. Yeah. Um, uh, I I think for a while there Los Angeles for sure was because they were so dominant. Still, uh, Vancouver like for them. sure was when they were good. Um, Chicago, Chicago's in an interesting spot. People are loving to because see Chicago lose. By the way, it's, they, it's well they were they won their first cup face, mm-hmm. then they became heel and they've been heel for a while, and then they were heel that got taken down. But ever since Scott, what's his face? The replacement goalie was there, and he was the, he was a feel good story. <laughs> he was a, what's his name? I forget <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he was a feel good story while they were out of playoff contention. <laughs> That's a potential face turn for the Chicago Blackhawks. Let's get this man's name, <laughs> Scott. You just googled Scott fill in goalie. Scott, Scott Foster. Foster. Scott Foster. Thank you. I want a Foster jersey. Also, Blackhawks fans, I want to know how many Blackhawks fans have a Foster jersey. Zero. You need a Foster. Listen, if you can't pick a guy, I mean, how many Taves and Keith's you know jerseys are walking around the the UC, dude? Get a Foster jersey. The UC. The UC. You don't go there. Don't call it the UC. The UC. Adam, what's next? Do, do you go to listen to some um, Chelsea Dagger? I got a. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> Andre Suster is still available. And I wonder, he's a right shot defenseman. He's 27 years old. We found the new Calvin DeHaan. Yeah, oh. <laughs> well. When you wish upon a star. <laughs> this is a guy that slots in at a, a second pairing defenseman that you could probably get for less than $2 million. Is that a guy they look at? That's another guy, like, again. They as in the Leafs. They just yes, need yes, to. Sorry, Leafs. They got to move the needle, I think, if they're going to bring someone on. Mm-hmm. And that's. Do they need to br- move the needle? There's so many guys. There's so many names you bring up, and it's like, could this be a guy on their bottom pair? And I'm like, yeah, there's dozens of those. But I was just that's, saying that you don't need to do that. I think that you need to get guys in here who can exit zone. I don't think that you do need. I don't think you need a Ryan Ellis. I don't think. I mean, God, they need a Ryan no, Ellis. Everybody needs a Ryan Ellis. Yeah, just yeah, Justin uh, Hall can get out of the zone. Great. Uh, How many Justin Halls can we get? Can we get six Justin Halls? Nine of them. Uh, but I'm just looking at the the Andre Schuster has played in Tampa. He's a he's a good player. He only played 43 games last year. They're definitely not going to be able to resign him um, because they've got so much kind of locked up in everybody else. <laughs> of course, the advanced stats community in Toronto again is rooting for Cody Franzen. I just don't see it. Stop! Stop! I th- I honestly Andre Schuster would be a good. Honestly, signing. I think the Leafs do. Take a look, a serious look at Cody Franson. I do think that. Uh, are they actually going to do it? I don't know. And if he's your six seven guy, who cares? Get him. Do, in, you do, can get him. Leave him. Huh? Go to Europe, make some money, man. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Might well, be done here. Um. And uh, so th- that kind of brings up the question, and people go, you know, is is Toronto going to make a trade now? Yeah, probably. 
But yeah. what's it going to be? And, like, well, apparently it's with Carolina. It has to be. Justin Falk's a name that keeps coming up, but a, gay, a guy that they have not re-signed, I don't believe, is uh, Trevor Van Riemsdyk. TVR. TVR? Who is a, again, I mean, I don't think he is a, he's not going to move the needle all that much, but what you need is stability, right? On the right side? Carolina seems like they want to shake up their entire roster for some strange reason. So as an RFA, they could move TVR. I'll tell you why. But it might cost the other team. I'll tell you why the Leafs teaming up with Carolina for a trade makes a lot of sense. I think Carolina turned heel (laughs) when (laughs) Tom Dundon played his Vincent (laughs) Kennedy goddamn McMahon role. And was like, I own the Hurricanes, damn it, and we're going to do things my way. My way. He's, I think these two heel teams need to help each other out. Okay. okay. A couple of signings I want to mention before we get to the press conference. First thing. <laughs> um, Very good, Steve. Calgary. Calgary, I, I, I was not sure about that Hamilton trade, and I'm still not. But with James Neal, I still feel like they come out a better team than they mm-hmm. were at the end of last year. James Neal is a great signing. Um, it's a five-year deal. Fine. What they needed was goal scoring. They found a guy who can score goals on on the off- offensive side is where his strengths are. So it's good for them. And he'll be a star in terms of how he plays in that city. He's rough. He's in there. That's a guy that that's a Calgary guy. Yeah, I I don't know if it'll be the greatest at the end, but I, you're gonna get at least three years worth. No out contract of that. Is. He's yeah. never not scored 24 goals or uh, above. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. And if in year five, you, he's not good anymore, who cares? Yeah. And they added Zarnik and they added Ryan. They spent a chunk of change. Yeah. They spent a chunk of change, yeah, but Derek they Ryan's were disappointed in their last season. And I, you know, I wasn't a huge fan of the Hamilton trade. I don't know if it's a disaster, um, but they've added a lot up front. They well, still, they got work to do, though. They still got to lock up Hannafin and Lindholm. Yep. Who's their goal thunder? Uh, Mike, Smith. Mike Smith. Yeah, Mike oh. Smith. Who's not bad. <laughs> so we were texting with someone, because uh, I, I guess there was a brief rumor, it's obviously not true, of uh, Robin Leonard going to Calgary. Calgary. Smith Leonard would be the angriest goalie duo <laughs> on the face of the planet. Um, Paul, uh, Winnipeg tried to tried to get Paul Stasny under, under the cap. Even dumping Steve Mason's deal, they probably were only going to be able to pay him $5 million a year, which is not enough. But an interesting signing in Vegas because Vegas is an expansion team plus one. And I'm so fascinated to see how they are next year. It's fascinating to me that he only signed for three years. Yeah. Underrated. Vegas lost Perron and Neil. Yeah. And they got Stastny. How many combined points is that? Like 130? <coughs> a lot. Something like that is a lot. To get Stastny, though, for three years. Stastny probably knows this could be his last deal, right? 35 years old. Who knows? I mean... He's a pretty good player. He scored oh, fifty three points. He's thirty two right now. Oh, 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 oh. But if he, you know, if if we we got to stop looking at the NHL the way we used to, which is guys play into their late thirties. They don't anymore. Everything above, I want to say, thirty four is bonus. Yeah, you're you're. It's like living past eighty. Yeah, you're you're <laughs> walking on you're walking on eggshells. You just don't you just don't know. Paul Stasny is obviously going to be a serviceable player. We think, barring any crazy injuries at the end of this, but I think Vegas got legitimately stronger with him. I don't think Perron is going to be... I thought that was an iffy signing. I don't think Perron's a 66-point guy. I really don't. Just like I don't think William Carlson's a 40-goal guy. Um, and, and, and then, you know, obviously, Doug Armstrong made some other great moves, but I thought Perron was expensive. Well, you and know, then James Neal, I don't, I don't know that, that that deal works out for Vegas. I don't know if that's a deal that makes sense for them. Vegas is so weird because yeah. it's almost like their first three years... Where they'll be in playoff contention looks like. I mean, they they have the Stanley like a final. Uh, it's all bonus. Yeah. If you make the playoffs once in your first three years as an expansion team, I think you should be praised for how doing long, an incredible job. How long did it job. take Nashville? Like ten? It took them a while. Mm-hmm. And Vegas might go three for three. And then remember how many players they drafted in their first year? Mm-hmm. Like all those guys, and they did well. All those guys are gonna join their NHL roster. Like, we still don't know what a young Vegas team looks like. Going into next year, the top three storyline is, are Vegas going to do it again? And I'm excited to see that. I think it's going to be fun. Yeah, I enjoy that. I'm excited to relearn that I know nothing about hockey. Yeah. Yeah. 
Every year I learn that I know nothing. Yeah. It's the best. Oh my god, it's ten thirty six. Okay, so <laughs> we're doing the press conference because it is the last one. So let's 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 get into it, Jesse. They're asking where you were when you found out Tavares uh, was a Leaf. MK Deman eighteen eighteen has the best story. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> from our Reddit page, it says, "Quick story: I'm at the World Cup." The World Cup, World Cup, in like the FIFA Russia. World Cup, wow. mm-hmm. and was at the Russia-Spain match. The match went to penalty kicks, and Russia pulled off the upset. Great game. Unbelievable. Jealous that you were there. As yeah, the last seriously. Spain penalty was saved and the stadium erupted with pure joy, I opened Twitter and got the notification that second that Tavares was a leaf. So as Russian fans were overcome with a moment of pure elation and joy, there are videos of me somewhere yelling, we got Tavares in the stadium. (laughs) I also was able to tell a couple from Calgary the news on the Metro ride home from Moscow Stadium, and their faces dropped in equal parts shock, anger, and jealousy. What a fantastic day for Leafs Nation and Russia. Wow. P.S. got no sleep partying with the awesome folks in Moscow, and now off to Brazil, Mexico. Let's hope Brazil wins. You got your... You got your wish. Brazil did win, and the Leafs get Calvin DeHaan at the same time. Ah! Cheers. Uh, nope, they didn't do uh, that. Well, you know what though? I have to say, Calvin DeHaan's contract's expensive. Almost five million. <laughs> I saw. I, this I is, there's a real quick turn, Adam. Yep. Did Calvin DeHaan <laughs> turn heel? <laughs> <laughs> Man, did he hit you with the steel chair? I'm a little hurt that he didn't sign right here, but I can see why the Leafs didn't go four, five, five over t- over five, four years. Calvin DeHaan's a heel now. Oh my goodness! Um, the World Cup, we haven't like talked about like it's it's kind of special that the World Cup is coming to Canada. Yeah, in 2026. I mean, well, we don't have all the details, and yeah. doesn't feel real. We got like a few games. There's still another World Cup in between. Yeah, so. that might be a disaster. By the way, yeah, in Qatar and. Cutter, Qatar. I thought you say it was Qatar. Why do they keep calling it Cotter? I anyway, whatever. Just spell it. Yeah, Q A T A R. That place. Anyways. Um, no, but uh, my uh, father-in-law, who's from Scotland, huge footy fan. Um, he's like incredibly jacked, and he's like, when that comes, I'm taking a month off work. Yeah, and just traveling North America and going to these games. I, I want to go to a game with him. I want, I want to go to a few games. Like the World Cup seems like such a fun thing to experience if you have the chance. It's a once in a lifetime thing. Yeah, I will especially be having every, it in Canada. I will be at every game I can possibly be at while it's here. Yeah, has Canada ever qualified for the World Cup? No. Come well, on. yes. Last time was in the eighties, but uh, wow, really? Yeah, but they. Hmm. I. Uh, uh, I wonder about the men's World Cup. Sorry, I. I the, Canada doesn't get like an entry because they we're hosting it. They might. I was told. Well, I think so, you were just about yeah, to say it. Yeah. They uh, they haven't made a decision. They asked the FIFA officials if Canada will get an automatic bid, and they say they will figure that out in the years to come. So there's going to be another meeting in like three years about how they're going to work out the details. And automatic entry may or may not come with it. They say it's a special circumstance because now they're going to expand to. 48 team World Cup, so there'll be extra entries. Amazing. But that's a lot of teams. Since <laughs> there are three countries hosting it, it's something that's never happened before. They don't know if they can be like, hey, here's an automatic bid for Mexico, US, and Canada, especially considering the US and Canada didn't make this World Cup, but they have to create two extra slots in the 48 team World Cup in the yeah. North American bracket for Mexico or uh, Canada. And I, I do, I think it's kind of bullshit that you would. Like Memorial Cup bullshit that you would just put a team in there that doesn't deserve to be there. Yeah, like well, Mexico is obviously good. No, um, I, and the, the US, U.S. would make it. The U.S. usually makes it. Canada hasn't even been in striking distance yeah. for quite yeah. some time. Like they're they're like, what a, a, an 80th ranked team. Oh, yeah, I think Canada, Canada, I think that might be high. Yeah, <laughs> like they're like I and, <laughs> and apparently our our young program is doing very very well. Like I know the uh, the the TFC junior juniors went over and beat the Juventus juniors this year. Oh, cool! So there's going to be players that are they may have a team at that point. My question is, uh, in the World Cup, and I know FIFA is not exactly the above board organization that you know seventy nine in the world, seventy ninth in the world right hey! now. Hey, do you really right. want to you really want to fake move them up? 35 spots to put them on? I don't think that's I, fair. I think I that's think bullshit. Just like Canada did with the Winter Olympics, I bet they invest super heavy in the soccer program yeah. over the next few years so that they genuinely earn it, or at least it's not a complete travesty that they're in. I just hope Scotland makes it for obvious reasons. Also, England winning today 
What that means game. I get to watch England play in Scotland and be silent. I Is can't. It, you're I can't supporting cheer. them. I well, I'm not allowed. You're not supporting the three lions in Scotland. I'm not Come allowed. on, I'm not allowed. No, anybody but England. That that's what they're gonna say, man. I'm we'd not. Rather, I'm, I'm not trying to get Russia beat up. than England. Man, I'm not. Oh boy, Croatia. See, I need Russia's to get Russia's drunk and have this the, conversation um, with people. Russia's gonna win the World Cup. I'm putting really? money on that. That's yeah. going to be the biggest shenaniganery ever. It's fixed. I think Croatia's going to win. I think Croatia's going to win. You know what says otherwise? Money. Ah, mm. poutine. Uh, next question. Uh, final question. Why aren't fire trucks called water trucks? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a fair question. Uh, it's a fair question. You imagine? Oh, good. The fire truck's here. She just starts flame throwing it. Oh my god, this is no, not helping. They shoot water. Why they, are they called fire trucks? They should be called water trucks. You're right. A water gun does not shoot fire. Thank you. It shoots water. <laughs> a water bottle is not full of fire. <laughs> so why are fire trucks not called water trucks? Mm. Riddle me that. Uh, so, But a firefighter, that's fine. Because he's fighting he's his fire. He's fighting. It's literally... But this truck that carries water is called a fire truck. It's not a firefighting truck. No. It, Jesse, have you seen the freaking picture of the, the new Is This a Sandwich? It's a bagel. <laughs> cut the wrong way. Someone posted it on a Reddit, actually. It okay. It so made have, me. Yes. It made me so angry. They just wrote thoughts. It, it, oh <laughs> my god, that makes Adam, me so are you angry. Just tweeting? Yeah, Adam's bad. I've tweeted at showing. least once. <laughs> a couple of times. I put out Andre Su- Adam Schuster, just, Adam, and people were like, "No!" <laughs> Except for Bolts fans, are like, "Yes, Why? sign him, sign him, okay. sign him." I was trying to get some opinion before the show ended to see if I have a new guy, but <laughs> I don't have a new guy. Dahan was my guy. I've lost my guy. I'm upset. Okay, I, I've been I checking my phone. Guy. I think it's a. Uh, I think it's a wrap on the 17-18 season. I think we can officially say we are into next season after the show is over. So what do we say this season, next it's episode? It's still this season, next season. Uh, next episode, I think we're on to next season. This coming season. This coming season, yes. Just trade Anyways. Carlson before this podcast is done for the love of God. It was, uh, it was a good year, you guys. I think it was a good year. I think hey, we had a good year. Thank you for uh, listening was, to the yeah. show. Uh, this was, of all the years I think we've done, this was the, definitely the most demanding yeah. I've, and yeah. and uh, we I still busy. feel yeah. like that was my fault. And I'm sorry. <laughs> what? What? What are you talking about? Oh, just because we. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. No, You're right. I'm no, sorry. Tell no, 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 Steve. Let's hit the three hour mark. Uh, why do I always there? get myself no, in trouble? No, We're almost Steve. there. We're at 257. Come We're on, let's Joe go. We're about to Joe Rogan this podcast and hit three do hours. It, no, it, because we know the hockey season is grueling. I know the hockey season is grueling. Uh, There's a reason we don't do two shows a week until the season starts. But I was like, no, we need to do two or three shows a week all of September. Well, I don't think. No, honestly, I don't think. I hadn't even thought I about didn't that. I didn't remember that happening. No, I think it was just that the season was intense. I think there was a lot happening. So much happened with the Leafs this year. Yeah, like, un- unlike any other season I think we've ever seen in recent memory. Like, like how do we talk about on. the Leafs when they, when they finish last? Like, I need to go back, and this is what I might do over the next couple weeks. Uh, being retired, I got time. Um, I wonder what we said during those episodes when they were finishing last. Like, wow, PA Parento might fetch a second. <laughs> like, Michael what are we Gagner, talking about? Oh, yeah. Kadri <laughs> suspended the last two games of the season? No, that was the season before, wasn't it? Oh, uh, you know, I yeah, think, yeah. No, it was the season they got Matthews, was it not? No, no, it wasn't. Oh, it was the year before that. Yeah. Oh, okay, I, I, that was guys, pre-Babcock. Wow. I think the Leafs are going to miss Sean Mathias. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Remember that was a thing? <laughs> How will David Booth perform oh, on the fourth line? Colin Smith is going to be the Leafs' second line center. By man, someone sent me a clip of us a little over a year ago. Yeah, talking about how you know, imagine the Leafs get to Varus it's and we cool just clip. all start, we just burst out laughing. Oh really? Oh man, we had Ron McLean on the show. Yeah, that was this year. That was ridiculous. Tim and Sid. Uh, yeah, great guess. Carolyn. CJ a Carly bunch of times. Agro, Carolyn. Carly, yeah, Carolyn Cameron. I mean, yeah, let's just um, name all the guests. Yeah. <laughs> like, <it was> just, <laughs> let's just list them. There's an archive. <laughs> yeah. Chris yeah. Johnson, 80 times. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Kiprios. It's a... Was that this year? We... Uh, uh, no, one? that was the, two uh, years ago, I think. The Kiprios wasn't that summer? No, it was two summers ago. It was... And yeah, that's where Kiprios said, and he was right. 
the Leafs will go as far as Freddie Anderson takes them. And that's been correct for and two Freddie years. Awesome. That's when he told us the story about the... Um, the Rangers. China yeah, Club. the Rangers. The China Club. That was my, that's probably my favorite story from the and podcast. Which, so which he was to the infamous... Oh, Rob McClain, besides the Steve Dangle interview with Mark Messier where he asked him about it. <laughs> also, uh, can you hold the Stanley Cup cookie above your head? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's right. That's the path to the cookie. <laughs> I just... I can't wait till the Leafs win a cup. Bomb! Bomb! When, when the Leafs win a cup, I'm going to get a Stanley Cup cookie and hold it above my head. Oh, yeah, because you won the Stanley Cup, right? I want a yeah. Stanley Cup sized cookie. <laughs> oh, just and then send giant... it to Mark Messier. See, I did it. <laughs> you got to do. I'm going to go to La Manna's Bakery in Scarborough. I bet they do it. <sighs> yeah, but can you make me a Stanley Cup, a life size Stanley Cup cookie? And then we'll have a cookie eating party. A Stanley Cup cookie eating party. The bullshit. You guys aren't splitting that cookie. You've been ridiculing me <laughs> for over okay. a year for that. <laughs> I am eating the whole thing in front of you. Okay, skinny yoga guy. You're going to eat the whole thing? Oh, yeah. Yes. Skinny. Yes, I am. <laughs> I've retired skinny yoga guy. It's not happening. <laughs> is that? Is I'll that be fat thing? and happy champion. How about that? <laughs> with you the said you were turning with a bad into, back. You said your back was hurting. You're turning to skinny yoga guy. You said that a couple no, of months ago. No, I was now. ordered to become skinny yoga guy. By your doctor. No, by a doctor at the walk in clinic who didn't even touch me. <laughs> I was in a room with him for 30 <laughs> seconds before he said I had a shitty back and was fat. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to go had ahead. No idea that that was the story. Man, okay, <laughs> so I explain what happened, and without touching me, he just goes, yeah, you know, your back's just not as good as other backs. Like, uh-huh. uh, you need to cut weight and do yoga. You're a skinny yoga guy now. And that's where that... And I was just like, okay, doctor with a body like a bag of milk, thank you. I'm definitely going to take your <laughs> well, advice. Well, coaches and- don't play. Wow. So this guy's a good coach. And his back's fine. And his back, well, he was slouching in his chair. He was. Uh, uh, I don't see him at the doctors complaining about back problems. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Said his hips were out of line. Is your doctor at the doctor? <laughs> I don't think so. And he, he was just like his podcast. He was just like, oh yeah, it's gonna be six to yeah. He's he's like, oh yeah, it's gonna be six to eight weeks recovery. And then oh. I went to the chiropractor who you know did stuff mm. and helped me. The, you know the show is never getting posted. <laughs> so, I just want right. to say quickly one thing. Yeah, you're right. We can't end that way. Nope. Thank you for listening this year. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's been our best year yet. And honestly, we could have never, as you know, done it without you. Mm-hmm. Because without you, there is no show. Truly. So thank you so much. We love you. We'll be back on July 24th Wow! with a brand new episode for the next two weeks. On the 10th and 17th, you will be able to listen to best of episodes on whatever podcatcher you receive this Ah, yeah, podcatcher. Ooh, you gosh. see what he did there. His sports net. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at Panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness.